He has labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer. has appreciated over the month or over the years. But then here in Ghana this time, we are fortunate. Such car service gives us month on month inflation. And as of last month, September, we are looking around 37.2. But then we all know very well in our homes that we don't buy bread. Um, last, the bread that I was buying last week, by the time I go back to ShopRite, the price has gone up again. So it keeps on increasing. And I always estimate the household inflation, i.e. what put food on our table, right? So the food that we put on our table, if you look at breakfast setting, so your milo, your bread, your sugar, and all those, if you put them together, the household inflation will be around 70% on the average. Wow. That's how I say it. But then the sales car service uses a waiting system where they put all the items that we consume in a basket. The weight on the basket, you know, determines the quantum of goods that are in that basket. But effectively, you get to know that by the time they go through all those processes, um, the weight will come down. Inflation will definitely come down. So we will not get the average that me and you, we normally consume in the homes that to say, okay, fine, at the end of the day, inflation is about 60%. We're going to get a weighted average, we're going to consider building material, they're going to consider all other things, transportation and all those, put them together, and the inflation will come to around that 37.2%. But what it means in your pocket is that prices are increasing. At the end of the day, when you receive your salary this month, you're not even sure what you can consume 
in the next you know one month so if you are consuming three balls of kenke in a in a day and it turns out that the price have gone up it used to be two cities at that round ball and then now the price has gone up to maybe four cd or three cd now two cd to three cd is about 50 percent increase so effectively you cannot buy the three again because your disposable income the purchasing power has gone down and that is why usually we use the style of living you know measure um to i mean relate to the inflation so possibly we look at your whether your living standard is improving or not depends on the purchasing power of what you earn on daily basis that is how it is but then if you relate these inflation numbers to and the rate at which is it, it is increasing to a minimum wage that is the minimum that if someone should work he's supposed to be paid i mean it tells you that at the end of the day the person cannot buy anything so effectively it has a way of eroding you know your pockets in your homes Another thing too is because as a result of this inflation, because people's you know salaries purchasing power goes down, it tends to reduce savings. The president Nanadu was retaliating to concerns by people in Kwabre and Manso in the Asante region, who, according to a journalist, have threatened to vote out the NPP. In the 2024 elections if their rules are not fixed. This was said in an exclusive interview as part of his official visit to the Asante region where he inspected and launched a number of projects. The people make those kind of threats. Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't frighten me. No. He has labored. He has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer. Thank you very much for choosing Pan-African Television and of course there's several other radio stations that are currently picking the show live. We are live on TV, on Pan-African Television. We are also live on social media on uh, Pan-African Television on Facebook. If you go to YouTube, the page you should be searching for is Pan-African TV. You can watch us live. We are live on radio, on Radio Gold. In the greater Accra region. We are also live on Ahunta 92.3 FM. It's a matter of all talk shows, Alaji and Alaji. And I welcome you to today's edition of the show. This morning, as we're speaking, delegates of the National Democratic Congress at the branch level are gathering at various venues selected by the constituency parties to elect the, the persons who will steer the affairs of the party at the constituency level for the next four years. It's part of of what they call a reorganization exercise. It will be followed by the regional election, the election of regional executives, and then the election of national executives, a juicy one everyone is looking forward to. But wish the NDC all the best. This morning we are discussing the matter of the president's tour of the Ashanti region. The fallout from that tour is giving media houses a lot of sound bites. There have been some denials. There have been some anger expressed at him whenever he's driven past certain areas because of a lot of people unhappy with the current state of affairs. So we talk about fallouts from the president's trip to the Ashanti region. Then we'll come to the greater Accra region because they replicated the discussion we had last week. The closure of shops in Idum. This time around, the shops were closed in the in Accra. And the question then, when we had that discussion, that Mr. Pratt raised was, who will intervene? Well, the government did intervene. The shop owners listened, and they are back. They will be opening their shop. They've opened their shop since yesterday, but they've indicated that what they want is to have a sit down with government to discuss how the issues of the economy 
can be dealt with so that they can trade properly. Whilst they are away, the CD has been trading like a well-performing stock against the dollar. Just keeps rising and keeps worsening. So we'll be talking about that issue, and then we'll end with the IMF's latest comment on inflation and the fact that domestic factors are accountable for what we are seeing currently. So those are the issues we'll be talking about this morning. And joining me in the studio for this discussion is when I start from my left, Solomon Owusu, who is a member of the MPP's communication team. We have a former chairman of the People's National Convention, Comrade Bernard Mona, who is the convener for Justice for Ghana, joining us in the studio. He's been a while since I saw him. Good morning. Mm. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. You know, I require Visa to be on your show. Visa? Yes. I didn't know. You cannot just walk into a large and a large. <laughs> and this is the mother of all talk shows. Yeah. And in particular, Thank you. if you... You are not invited. You can only come and hover around, just as I've been doing. <laughs> it's nice to have you on the panel this morning. And he's on the panel with Ambassador Sampiali. Uh, the two of them are veterans of the show. Ambassador Sampiali is former uh, Ghana High Commissioner to India, but very importantly, is president of NDC Professionals Forum. He's a delegate this morning. So he'll be one of those who will be voting in the elections. He has not uh, voted. Yes, he, no, hasn't yet. he hasn't asked yet. So when he is, when he is okay. done here, he will go and vote to decide who and becomes the, the leader well, of well, we're going to his constituency. Well, we uh, will also be joined this morning by none other but the host of the couch, Amar Pratt, who is channel manager for Pan African Television. That will complete my panel for today. My name is Senna Nombo, and a big thank you once again to the various radio stations currently tuned in to us. We, before we start the discussion, I've already mentioned the fact that the NDC is having constituency elections today. And uh, just to start with perhaps some quick comments on the elections that the NDC is holding today. And I guess it will not be bad to start from my left. <laughs> so. Me too. My brother, asked my brother yesterday, I met him. So I have a fair idea his mission this morning as for my he has a mission he has a mission to accomplish oh, okay. yes yeah, so good morning and uh rightly so ndc elections uh, they have interest i mean what is happening or going to happen today and probably tomorrow i'm sure they will do some tomorrow as well uh will be the defining moment for those contesting for the national elections uh, particularly the national chairmanship and the general secretary position that is what today's elections is about and right from yesterday a lot of ndc communicators that i was supposed to be on shows with all of them could not come why because there has been rumors across the country that some names have been taken off just to suit a particular agenda and here let me empathize with uh, uh, Mr. Fuswampofu, uh, because uh, I see a lot of allegations going against him that most of the names that they are trying to take out are people that they are perceived to be Mr. Fuswampofu's uh, people. And so if they allow them to be in the album, they will go and vote for a candidate who will subsequently vote for Mr. Fuswampofu. That is a report coming from the grass. But that is the NDC's matter. We in the MPP believe that whoever comes, Mr. Fosuabo has been the chairman, he lost, he said he a general secretary, he lost, if he even went to court as a star witness, and when he was put a direct question, Mr. Esiedu Ketia, you, you, when you came to court, what figure did the National Democratic Congress get? That made you believe that they won the election. He said he did not come here to challenge an election. We wish them all the best. They should not do anything untoward to destroy the image of the National Democratic Congress. We need them as a vibrant opposition to put us on our toes till this country, Ghana, becomes no more. We wish them the best of luck. Mm. Well, Mr. Mona, I, I didn't know that Ghana would become no more. 
I like to quote President Mills in this instance that Ghana will live <laughs> and give glory to its maker. But good morning to Solomon with his, um, his Ajumbi politics. Um, my uncle, Ambassador Sampi Yale, that I have not seen for a while. Um, and to start off by saying that I have no mission, whether it is Ahmadiyya Muslim mission, Baptist mission, or whatever mission, I have no mission. Mine is just to come and express my views on issues. And if that constitutes a mission, then you can categorize it in whatever form you want. But I want to wish the National Democratic Congress very well. This is about the second stage of their internal processes. They had done with the branch and unit levels. And today they are at the constituency levels. That is the second stage. From this stage, they will be moving to the regional stage. They will be moving to the National Delegates Conference to elect their national officers. And of course, the ultimate will be the determination of who will be their standard bearer. Critically, aside the branch level elections, this is the most critical component of the elections, constituency elections. If you get it wrong at the constituency level, it is difficult to get it right at the APS level. The constituency and the branch levels constitute the base. In fact, that is the foundation. And so if the foundation is defective, you can be assured that no matter how you try to put the structure, it will still be defective at the end of the day. And therefore, the NDC need to get it right if they want to show any seriousness in the election 2024 from today. And of course, I am told that about, I think, 100 and about, uh, about a number of them, about 97 of them will not be doing today. They will also be doing their conferences tomorrow. Yeah. And so it's like it's almost half today, right? that will be done today. I've also noticed that they've not been able to resolve some nuances within the party. Some constituencies have had difficulty. Amasamine is one of them, where some people want to contest and they have been denied their right to contest. And in some regions, some persons have been suspended. I think, uh, 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 what is the name of this place? Legon North. Enough. I'm told that somebody was suspended from the party and the person wants to contest elections and he's been denied the right to contest and that is also generating confusion. Therefore, people are not even certain whether the elections in Ayawasu North will take place. And so all those things are things that even after tomorrow, the party will deal with. But I'm happy that so far I've not heard about any malhandling of the situation. Um, in some time past, when it gets to this level, you see a lot of macho men, brutal uh, activities that are going on. But so far, you cannot say that that has happened. There are some tribal politics that have taken place, some tribal and religious politics that I think are not healthy for our national cohesion. I have been observing, particularly within Greater Accra, where it is like if you are not a guy, you should not contest for a chairmanship or a secretaryship position. And this has been led by serious senior members of the party. And I feel that if you are not careful, if you are not careful and you go by that agenda, you may end up electing people, but you may not win the vote in your constituencies. Of course, to some of us it will play. Because I don't see, when you go to some of the constituencies in Greater Accra, and you look at the presence of our population, is negligible. You go to Ayawaso, take all the Ayawaso constituencies, and tell me the presence of the Ghana population there. So you go to Ayawaso Central, and you are insisting that a Ghana must lead. You go to Ayawaso East, you are insisting that a Ghana must lead. If you are not careful with this kind of 
public campaigns. It will have serious ramification for the total votes that the party will be getting. I get to some places and I put my mind and my ears on the ground. And it's like when a certain tribe we see any of our members contesting, wherever we are, we must all back that candidate. Even if that candidate is not functional, it's not a performing candidate, must we do that in our body politics? And that is where I have my dangers coming from. The final point that I want to make on this matter is that, look, there are tenets of democracy. One of the tenets of democracy is regular contestations and elections. And so when somebody is occupying an office and someone is coming to contest that person, instead of us seeing it as enhancing the democratic processes, we rather see it as a call to enmity. And so you see that it's almost as if, look, we must beat each other, we must kill each other, we must not speak to each other because somebody is contesting us. A large man Medris who says that, look, if you say and you proclaim that you love democracy, then you must love contestation. Because you cannot say you are a democrat and you abhor contest. You don't want elections to take place. So, Senator, as we sit here, if you want to come and contest my position, then suddenly you become an enemy. How do I then become a democrat? So I want to encourage all of us who have chosen to be part of this enterprise called politics. Well, look, contestation is a critical component in enhancing the beauty of our democracy. And so, otherwise, then we should avoid calling ourselves Democrats. I wish the NDC well. I wish them very, very well. It is after this I will be able to speak on the and the national level contestations. But for now, let the constituents choose who they want. And you know, I said final, but let me put this. The constituencies are not even about the national elections. It is about who wants to become MP as well. Yeah. You understand? Who wants to become MP wants to influence. So sitting MPs are influencing who should be elected. And prospective MPs or candidates are also influencing who should be elected. Because they feel that if we get a certain number of people that are in favor of us, we could easily go through the constituency primaries when the time comes. So national does not play any role that much at this level. Everybody can come and show your face once in a while. And so I wish them well. Uh, I think that I read what the former president did. He contributed money to support the party. I wish that... Uh, it will go for the rightful purposes. Uh, is, it, is it to buy uh, mm. the influence which are... <laughs> Ambassador. I uh, come can, I, can I? It is for uh, good purposes. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. The former president could have decided that I will identify constituencies and personally deliver money to them. But to hand over money to the party and say, party, you are organizing a process. Use it. So how the party decides to use it, it is independent of whatever he's thinking. I think that others who are interested in these processes must learn that, look, we should contribute to the bigger pot because the party needs money to rally all these processes. I have been a national officer before, and I know when it comes to times like this, look, you have to pay the police. You have to pay the media. You have to pay the EC. You have to do so many other things, even feeding the delegates. And so the party becomes so stressed. And the national officers are the ones that are heavily impacted mm. at this level. So when we see people doing this and sitting at my privileged position as a former national officer of the party, I commend him for the gesture to his party. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Comrade. Ambassador. My nephew, thank you for saving uh, Solomon. Because uh, I have become very clear in my mind that when it comes to Mahama, he stopped breathing. He stopped breathing. You know, even this, that he has given money for the orphan constituencies. Yes, because the MPs, three years. So he is not using that to buy, buy any vote. So start breathing. Uh, Sana, uh, this 
quadrennial process of electing national officers is not an abstract exercise. It's an exercise that rejuvenates the party. It's the time that old stock are removed and new ones fill in. So there's a combination. So for every democratic process, like Bernard said, this is very, very key in setting up the infrastructure of a governance. We in the NDC for a long time have believed that you cannot be who you are in the NDC because you know somebody. You know, because we don't have uh, such godfathers, historical godfathers. That says, uh, whatever, Budankwa Buzia and then the Dumbo. We don't have that tradition. So in NDC, you join as a person without historical uh, aprons. You join not because your great grandfather was anybody. And then we are, we are a party that gives opportunities to everybody. Everybody, anybody. Even look at the youth that we have brought on board and trained. So people like Okujato, Ablakwa, uh, Sam George, and the rest. It was an exercise that was intentionally crafted by Professor Moss. That, please, introduce the youth now. So that in future, look at me. I mean, I used to be very strong, isn't it? And busty. But I'm, I am not a, a, a monster, a super monster. Age will take me away, and there should be some people to take place. Okay. Uh, when your uncle is speaking in proverbs, you don't. Cool. Cool. <laughs> you know. So cool. whatever it is, that that is, uh, Bernard. That performance is one attribute of a man. You understand? Yeah, but there are, these days, I cannot climb a pole to hoist a flag as I used to do when I was a uh, DC in Cape Coast. So definitely, we have recognized the young ones. And whether they grow beard or they do what, we see them as our future leaders. We don't see our young people as people with coconut heads. We don't do that. We see them as the future of our governance. What is happening today, I have seen and read a lot of injunctions uh, across the country. And uh, many people are seeing it negatively. But I said, no, don't look at it negatively. Because if there's a funeral which you don't want to attend, if there's a car, a bus parked, you will not even go near the bus. Are you following what I'm saying? If there's a funeral you don't want to attend and there's a bus there, even if it's free, you wouldn't want to join. It underlines the attractiveness of the NDC to the youth and majority of Ghanaians that now they think the NDC is, has become very attractive and properly so. I took a list of persons who are contesting and who have even won branch executives. Some are real core professionals, doctors, engineers, have all joined the fray. Because they are not only joining NDC to, and for NDC to win elections. These are Ghanaians who believe that we have come rock bottom as a country. We have hit the rock bottom. That they need the NDC to come to step up this economy, bring up this country. And that is why there's a lot of injunction, a lot of injunctions. But nobody wants to be left out. So now, if you see there's an opportunity for you to be part of a winning team, and there's somebody is scheming, why you resist, don't you? So, but then, like Bernard said, I am happy that so far no violence has taken place, and the party has also established an appeal system. It is not that you are disqualified now, and therefore you cannot take a position come to the National Appeal and the Appeals Committee will deal with you. One disturbing fact that I've learned though is that even though some people have been uh, you know, accepted by the Appeals and cleared them by the Appeals Committee, their names have still not appeared on the pictures. 
either it's mischief on the part of some people or that the, pre, uh, the printers went too early. The printing went too early. But then uh, I'm a member of the National Elections Committee. We are meeting on Monday to look at all those things because we don't want to carry the problem to the regional and national constituencies where, but like Ben I said, well, that, that's where the real action is, you know. So um, every NDC member watching us, watching us this morning, I'm just appealing to you, make this process as clean, fair, and transparent. Devoid of violence and insult, because after this, we would need to be together to fight that elephant up to the bush. I know that as their tradition, they will not leave us alone. They will infiltrate. Bernard, this issue that of tribalism that you identified is very real. Most of our people are either settlers or indigenous voters. Okay? And it's only a failed candidate that resort to tribalism. Because if you are a good candidate, no matter where you find yourself, people will vote for you. All right? Our Osajifu was voted for in Accra, Great Accra. Bernard, you know, you know that. Our Osajifu was voted for Accra Central. Radio Dio. Even though he comes far from our region uh, in Grovero, but he was voted as uh, a candidate for the Radio Dio. So you can be an Ashanti, you can be a Northerner, you can be a Frafra. Wherever you find yourself, your call to duty should not be true tribalism. Because as soon as you win through tribalism, the other tribes will start fighting you. And I hope uh, from here I'm going to vote. And I know who I'm going to vote for. And as long as I wanted to give you my candidate. His constituency is just. Well, you have a candidate in the <laughs> Yes. Yes. Why do you have to have a candidate? Well, well, I'm going to say that. I'm going to Thank you very much. And there's a message coming from the NPP. Dr. Grace, I didn't know that. Uh, Dr. Grace, I used to that process. I can confirm that my Esikado Ketan constituency, one of the open handed constituency, has received the 10,000 CDs that were sent by former president, uh, His Excellency JDM, and we are very grateful. It will go a long way to help with election activities. Uh, no. <laughs> Reason. Yes, yeah, so, so it means the party has sent it to the constituency. So it is the party that yes. is giving the money out, not the candidate. Well, let me. Well, I, I think that on that I agree with him because at this moment, mm -hmm. J, JM gave his money to party. But for often constituency. For whatever the party then chooses to, this, to use the money for. Yeah. This one was party. Uh, express. It was, it was express, expressly for often but, constituency. But I'm saying that JM gave it to the party. Mm. The party decided to give it to the orphan constituencies. JM gave it and said, support <coughs> orphan constituencies. And they said, look, some of the non orphan constituencies are even also bleeding. Need help, yeah. And yeah. that, I believe that if he had done even he had done that even directly, yeah. So was, would no, let's empower the political. Well, let, let my view is let's empower the Okay, so I, 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 that, that I share. Okay, for, for those Alan gave money, for those who are listening to us, um, this this is this is part of the statement that was issued by the party, and this is the national. So I'm reading from paragraph three, which is the National Elections Committee, under the guidance of FEC, has decided to put elections in a few constituencies on hold due to disputes over delegates lists for those constituency and or the exclusion from ballot papers of candidates who have been qualified through the appeal process. These constituencies are A, Eastern Region. So in the Eastern Region, there are about uh, uh, 12 constituencies. Are Farm Plains South, Mpraiso, Etiwa East, the, all the three are on hold. Etiwa West, ballot list issues. As it Achiase, yeah, ballot list issues. And Koko also the same. Upper West Akim, the same. Afram Plains North, there are some branches on hold. Akim Swedro, uh, on hold. Ekropo also has ballot list issues. Fantiakwa South, youth wing elections on hold. So Fantiakwa South, only the youth wing elections are on hold. Uh, is it Asini Ma Mansua Krosu? Okay, Asini Mansua Krosu. Women's wing elections on hold. So that's two of the friend constituencies in the eastern region with various issues. Uh, there's the central region has Cape Coast North on hold. 
Ebra Asebo Kwamanke say ballot list issues. Okay, that's uh, Central Region 2. The Volta region has Hohwe on hold to agreed date. So it means that Hohwe is on hold, but a date has been agreed on when the elections will be held. Uh, okay, so then the, se the, the second constituency, they say Suga Kope, but it is uh, South Tong. It's not the South Tong. Uh, I know the party knows better than me, but I, I, this is where I was born, South Tong. Uh, there are five branches on hold in South Tong. Uh, interesting. In the Western region, Prestia Huni Valley on hold. Shama, 15 branches on hold. In the Upper West, Drapa is on hold. In Greater Accra, there are seven constituencies. Shai Usudoku, branch issues. Botiano Englishi, 14 branches. Ningo Pram Pram, branch issues. Lejokuku, branch issues. Ayawaso North, on hold. Amasaman, on hold. Adenta, youth elections, on hold. There's a, okay, so this is the party trying to explain what it means. On hold means the constituency elections in its entirety are postponed. Ballot issues, the, the explanation is that all constituencies are required to include candidates who have been duly cleared to contest through the appeal process on their ballot papers and exclude candidates who have been disqualified through the appeals process. Ballot. Elections will not be held till ballot papers are rectified. There's branch issues which says that the constituency elections will go ahead with the exception of certain limited branches. That's interesting. Well, so this are, that's a directive from the party. And uh, well, we, we wish the end is all the best. Yes. That's not chairmanship. Well, that's where is Ofo Swamp okay. coming my, from? My friend. <laughs> my friend. That so, is where the problem is. My, my friend. Well, uh, uh, you, this is a, you, you are listening to matter of all talk shows, Alagi so, and Alagi. We'll take a short break. Come to come back. We'll be talking about the issue fallout from the president's visit to the Ashanti region. We'll be right back. Trasaco Estates, home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes, presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs, a premium master plan community of service plots surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on-site sales executives are ready. Call on 055-659-2658. Are you put off by the very low standards that most accommodation facilities offer? Well, it's time to heave a heavy sigh of relief. Collindale's Court is here. here. Located at Birch Street, Community 12, off the Tema Motorway, Collindale Court offers you top of the range, short and long stay accommodation, steeped in luxury. Our two bedroom apartment is what you and the family need for your weekend getaway. While our one bedroom apartment gives you a peaceful ambience to work from home. Our rooms are fully furnished, air conditioned, and come with all you need at your back and call. A well stocked kitchen, dining area, Wi Fi, DSTV, Netflix access, and an endless list of other amenities, thus creating a unique sense of place far exceeding your expectations. Our gym and swimming pool exactly suit your preference for keeping fit and recreational activities. We also have a very spacious conference room for your business meetings. Collindale Court offers even more. Our rooftop bar is a thing of scenic beauty, giving you and your loved ones a bubbly nightlife of music and dance. Call us now to make your reservations. 0243-186017 or 0244-258-332. Collindale Court. Exceptional, Exceptional comfort for, for beautiful, beautiful people. people.
has labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer. Thank you very much for sticking and staying with us on the matter of all talk shows. Alaji and Alaji, we are live on Pan African Television, we are live on radio, on Radio Gold. I'll be going through some of the list of radio stations that are currently tuning to us in case you are moving to any of those regions so you know which channel to tune to once you are in that community. Um, well, uh, <laughs> now, okay, so let, let's jump on to the next issues. Whereas when, when we come to her, uh, she can spend some time and deal with the first issue and put the two together. Uh, but let's move on to the president's tour of the Ashanti region and the fallout from that tour. And I'll start with Bernard Bonner, comrade. <sighs> I don't know how to start and where to start from, but let me say a welcome to Ama. Uh, next time she invites me to the couch, I also come late. I'm sure that will please you. Because when you invited her to Alaji and Alaji, she came late. So I would want to, to, to honor you by coming late for her program. Um, I want to join Samuel Ablakwa Okujeto in calling on the president to halt the unnecessary spending of money at this critical time and to come and sit down and find a panacea to the current economic challenges that confront our nation. It is only when we are assured that we have stability within the economy that the president thoughts will be of any essence. But at a time when the economy is in tatters, the president is gallivanting in uncountable vehicles. A show displays of opulence, profligate lifestyle, virtually doing nothing. Because he is there at this time telling us that projects that were supposed to have been completed maybe a year or two ago. He is lamenting in some instances that the pace of work is slow and urging contractors to be able to overcome. Worst of all, as has been the mantra of the president, he goes about promising and promising, cutting sword upon sword, so that new projects can begin. So he was in the Ashanti region, and it was a four-day tour of the Ashanti region. And if you take everything in the Ashanti region tour, you come to a painful conclusion that aside that it was a huge fiasco, the president also wasted our time, wasted our money, and insulted us as Ghanaians. The president went to meet with the Ashantihine. And from that, the Ashantihine said, go out there. And the Ashantihine spoke traditional wisdom. Go out there and tell people your success story. That's what the Asantehini said. Knowing very well that there is no success for the president to go, there is no story, in fact, to go and talk about. He urged the president to go out there and talk about your success story. The president's success story was that he cannot force anybody to go and use his thumb and vote for the MPP, and that if you decide, you can vote for the NDC. I'm sure Ostum Four will be excited to hear that that is one of the success stories that the president has gone out to go and see. Within the same tour, the president was like we are seated, a seat in between 
was a Galancé kingpin who doubles as the regional chairman of the new patriotic party and owner of Akonta Mines. Who is into the forest and devastating the environment, doing illegal mining? Something that President Akufrado has said he is concerned about, and that he will do everything. And yet, your own minister, the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, has indicated his distaste about the activities of Akonta Mines. The Minerals Commission has also indicated that they never gave him permit to go and mine and that what he was doing was illegal and against the permit that they granted him. The president still wants evidence to know who a Galamsea is. So the man that is polluting and destroying our environment was seated almost next to the president even before the Ashanti Hine. When you have gone to the chiefs to go and tell the chiefs that they should help you in combating Galamsey, and all of us, you have drawn us in to help you to combat Galamsey, there we are and shocked that one of your own, publicly acknowledged and officially acknowledged by your own appointees, that he was engaged in illegal mining. He was with you, singing Adodi. And so, <laughs> I don't know what president went there to show. Whether he wanted to show that why. Amongst my success, the things that I needed to convey to the people of Ghana, a contact mines, an illegal miner. It's one of my own, and I wanted to show public display of him. And then you turn around and say that we should help you to fight Galamse. Even as that call was without a touch through. Because soon after he made that call, you recall, the president immediately met with his DCs and said, look, this whole fight and clamp down on Galamse is to enable us to break the eight. And I'm sitting here wanting to my party to win elections in 2024. And you think that it will be my responsibility to come and help you so that we fight a minute so that you can break the eight. I don't know who taught President political communication. I don't know. And I don't know, as Mustafa Hamid will say, whether there are no more persons that can look into the president's face and eyes and tell him that, Mr. President, what you are doing is wrong. Wallahi. I mean, Mustafa, this is the time for you to come and shout, Wallahi. Because it appears that no one is able to tell Mr. President that he's not doing the, 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 the needful. And what was the question? Look, President, you went around your campaigns. Monsieur Menche, try me and see. And the people tried you. In the course of try me and see, you made so many phantom promises. Eh? Including, me buy to wait, I'm coming to cut down prices of almost everything. I'm coming to make things better. I'm coming to do your roads. So you go into a radio station, Otec FM, and then they ask Mr. President, look, the people of this community says that, look, you have not done their roads. And if you don't do their roads, they will not vote for you because it was part of the reason for which they voted for you. The president act has become customary of him decided to issue a salvo telling them that why he cannot compel anyone cannot come and hold your thumb and go and cast a vote and that if you decide you can go and vote for your NDC as if it is only even NDC that is a political party in Ghana so your choice of words and communication means that look you are telling the people that You don't care about their plight and their circumstances. And so the president went round and through the tour, then we got the shocker coming from the Minister for Energy. 
<coughs> who then announced and in fact did when they went to commission a uh, cut the sword for the uh, Swami interchange. And then he said that the media in Ashanti region have taken money so that they can make the new patriotic party unpopular. You understand, Senator people and your colleagues in Ashanti region, you've taken money to make the new patriotic party unpopular. And so I don't know when it has become a crime that the media should report what they have seen. So if the president is going on a tour in his own stronghold and people are booing him and the media report that this is what the president went through, how is that a misreportage? How does that qualify that someone is influencing the media? But if you are the president of the land, you have the Ministry of Information. You have the Ministry of Communication. You have the Communications Directorate in the Presidency. And you have a whole team of media from the Presidency accompanying you on any tour and every tour. And those people can be bribed to come and give the kind of reportage. Then it means that your Presidency is of no effect. But you see, we are in currency crisis. We are in food crisis. And so many things are not going right. So why is Mr. President not interested in sitting down and finding a solution to the problems that are the reason for which the people are booing at him? And he's so fixated about us. Thoughts that brings about nothing. Part of the tour, he went commanding Natoshi for working at judges homes Natoshi is responsible for the district assembly common funds the district assembly common funds are in areas for almost four quarters <laughs> I don't know what, 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 what goes into the kind of thinking the district assembly common fund is in areas for almost four quarters. Almost a year. No funds have been released. But that same person would go and supervise the construction of judges' homes. Forgetting that tomorrow the president will decide to build another national cathedral. And these judges' homes, just as those in Accra, were the ones that could be demolished. The president can go and demolish because judges' homes have no consequence to the president. We have judges' homes at the liberation roundabout area. Some of them were at the verge of being completed. Some of them, Justice Kweku Jan, he moved into his place less than 18 months. Newly constructed. You asked all of them to leave and you went and demolished all of them. So that you can serve your God and the promise you made to your God. So today, if you are telling us that you build judges' homes, Judges' homes are significant, they are important for the administration of the work of the judiciary. If it were so, you would not have demolished some. And now that least, I think the contractors have even now left. Because you cannot do it. You told a lie. So, I, 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 I sincerely don't know what President Akufadu is doing on these tours. Aside insulting us and telling us that, look, he has lost the fight. And probably the only thing that the tours are doing is that it is saving the president from maybe high blood pressure. We are sitting down in Accra as he met with the Guta people. I'm sure you have, you have called some of them. They say when they met with the president, in fact, the words of the president even made them to know that, look, they are in for a big trouble. Mr. President told them that, look, Look, the situation we are in, it will be with us for a long time. It is not like, oh, I would, we are taking some steps. He said, look, we are, we, virtually the president is telling them that he is helpless, he is without ideas. He cannot think. So telling the people that, look, this situation is going to be with us for a long time. 
So, in fact, according to them, the gun man chair was the one who even gave them some hope. But Mr. President had no hope. So, why are you doing these tours? So that you can spit in the faces of the many Ghanaians. I, 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 I think sincerely that, look, the tour of the Ashanti region brought more negative. The short tour of the Ashanti region rather give us the impression that President Akufado is saying that he cannot fight Galamsey, that he is the person that Nyaho Tamaklu described him to be, he is the person that Kofi Kumsin described him to be, he is the person that President Kufo warned us about, and we did not listen. So, look, his level of intolerance has been exposed. He cannot bring us together as a people. We have learned bitter lessons, as Nyaho Tamakulo has said, by the kind of insults and parading of people who are even, instead of advising the president that no, we want to you know, they are rather there urging the president on to continue to spit more in our faces. I think if we want to move forward, he should cut his store, come and sit down, rally everybody. This is the time that he has to sit down and rally everybody to see what we can do to address the terminal problems that we are faced with now. Thereafter, I think that he will have a message to go around to tell the people. Worst case, in crises like this, what heads of states will do is that they will sit down and do what we call a national broadcast to tell us how they are going to fight the things that afflict us every day. And so the Ashanti region tour, in my opinion, was a useless one. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Bernard Mona. I'll come to uh, Mr. Solomon also shortly. Um, let me, a few messages. This is also best joining us on Facebook. It says, Senna uh, Kufuado was once again booed in my hometown, Achima Koso. And the uh, there's would they do Jay who says the city will reach 20, 20 cities to the dollar by December? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yesterday it was 15, yesterday it was 16, and you are talking about December 16. Last night it was 16. Abraham Jonathan is also joining us. So the president could not speak 16. on his successes, the successes of his government in Ashanti region because there's nothing to show. There is economic hardship in the country. The country is broke. The government is confused. There is also uh, Suleiman Abdurrahim who says, when you use tricks and games to rule a country, boo booing will be in the app. Uh, there is a, uh, okay, there are, there's Sheikh Osman Abu Bakar Odysseus who says, Sana, it is unfortunate that Ghanaians fell for Akufuado's lies and theatrics and is voting for him. Now, apart from the unprecedented hardship, insecurity, and insensitivity, the show of arrogance is another. Richard Allah says, Lands Ministry directs Akunta Mining to stop operating Tano Forest. Why is Wuntumi walking free? Akufuado has done nothing to Wuntumi. That means uh, he is involved in Galamse. He concludes. Um, there is CJ who says, Solo is weeping more than the bereaved. He wishes the NDC elections had more internal uh, elections throughout the rest of the year. Just so issues concerning a comatose government are not discussed. I can have assure Solo that the deafening booze are, are not abating soon. There's a, <laughs> there's Mandy William Jakes who says a good morning. So now do you know that any time MPP hear John Dramani Mahama's name, they are afraid because they know JDM will prosecute them and collect all the stolen monies from them and jail them. God bless JDM and protect him from those evils. He says Aruna Jibro is also joining us. My humble regards to Senior Solomon also for such brilliant and fantastic submission. You should continue making us proud. That's coming from Haruna Jibril. Thank you. There's a um, uh, capito. Is it go also mention? There's no matter the lies and propaganda of JDM and the NDC. Ghanaians will never, uh, uh, by mistake, vote for the NDC again because they have nothing good to offer us and they are not ready to sell their color TV for black and white. That's coming from Capito. Uh, go also um, there is Alexander W who is also joining us 
Um, this, okay, I think he has some other concerns. There's still Mark Beno Heavy, who is joining us. As I passionately appeal to, his appeal to General Sec the General Mosquito not to rock the boat. He has been the best sec General Secretary of the party so far, and should remain there to continue the good job he's doing. Chairman Afopo has brought stability to the party. This is not the time to bring division. 2024 is the target to throw out this indolent, indolent MPP and clueless Kufuado. Uh, that is his appeal to the general secretary of the party, who I'm sure has already picked forms. Kolan Limopak Stone, who says the 1992 constitution has given much room for negativities we are experiencing now. As a result, needs to be amended as soon as possible to keep the current crisis. Other than that, the suffering of Ghanaians continue, even if there is a change of government. He sent that from Nang Panduri. Uh, this is our end with Dennis Yakwete, who says, honestly, it marvels me to believe that President Anado did not cut short his tour by now, when it became obvious that he was accompanied by galloping inflation from one community to another instead of goodwill. Can you imagine that under President John Mahama, you wake up from bed in the morning only to meet the exchange rate of the dollar to the city, move from 1 is to 12.5 the previous day to 1 is to 13, and by midday the same day, it rises to 1 is to 15. And Ghana will still remain unoccupied. Something is certainly wrong somewhere. But when the dusk is settled, we will get to know. Shalom. That's coming from Dennis Yaquete. Mr. Wusu. Shalom. Ah, well, 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 well. I started by telling you that my brother's mission is well known to me. And so I'm the least surprised about what he just told your listeners and viewers uh, is very normal. He has painted a situation as though President Kufuad only went to the Ashanti region to party and to sleep. Rightly so, he said, the Otun foretold him, go out there and tell your success story. And the president went out to tell the success story so far. Indeed, in the Ashanti region, if you look at between 2017 to date, we have constructed 1,180.2 kilometers of road, which was never the case under the National Democratic Congress, and especially the leadership of former President John Mahama, that they are so much eager to see him come back, which is a mission impossible. At least Daniels have shown on two occasions that they do not believe that the National Democratic Congress has what it takes to take us from where we are as a country. Some section of Ghanaians are not happy because they believe that the new patriotic party is the party that has all the solutions and that if they are able to push the party to the wall, it will come out with what is best for the country. That is all to it. And that's why today the NDC is having an election and it's as though there is nothing happening. People are no more interested in the political tradition of the National Democratic Congress because they have shown that in the midst of difficulty, that we are looking for alternative ideas that, that is more, I mean, superior to what we are doing now, we are having none from them. The president went to the Ashanti region. According to Otufu, go out there and tell your success story. He went to Konongo and commissioned the hospital, the municipal hospital. That was a success story. That is a success story. The president did not end there. He went to Trebe. People have been making noise about what are the agenda 111 hospitals. You remember that was where he cut the sword for the commencement of the agenda 111. Work was progressing steadily. He did not end there. If you have ever used between Anya Kwanta to Obuasi, Obuasi, a gold mining town, and the, the deplorable nature of the road under the SWAL NDC administration, you would go there and clap for the new patriotic party. Indeed, the president used the road asphalted from Anya Kwanta to Obuasi. And when he got to Obuasi, once again, go out there and tell your success story. He went to a place called Bid uh, Bidim to inspect the progress of work 
on the trauma and accident hospital being built there. He did not end there. Go out there and tell your success story. From there, he went to Biposu, Insuta Biposu Kwame, where we commissioned a maize processing factory, a very big one at that. My brother is into maize farming. I was thinking he was going to clap for the government. Because now when people go to buy his maize, at least they have a facility that can process the very maize he's put. <laughs> but my brother decided not to see that. Go out there and show what you have done. In the Ashanti region, out of the 54 1D1F one factories, 27 have been completed and working and employing close to 30,000 people feeding their families and that is the reality of the day so you may sit in accra not knowing what is happening in the rest of the country and think that all is not going well yes we understand the Ghanaian, and no one will come and sit here and say all is going well we are in difficulty the world is going through a difficult moment and that is how come you go to uk someone becomes a chancellor within three weeks he's gone someone becomes uh, a prime minister within 45 days is gone because people are struggling from every part of this world people are calling for some form of radical changes to happen because we are not in normal times but at least we can comfort ourselves with the fact that in the midst of all these challenges your lights are on i'm very surprised that we did not experience this kind of situation during the s administration, yet our lives were off. The world had not experienced COVID, the world had not experienced, more or less, the world is at war, Europe is at war. And the ramification of this, we are bearing it. Then my brother Mona was saying, he should have uh, uh, sat in Accra and solve our problems. How can he solve problems without going onto the field? How can he sit in Accra and determine the problems confronting the people of Ashanti region? When always you are receiving reports, as a leader, you must at a point go on the ground to ascertain for yourself whether or not what you are being told is factual. Really? So why would anybody that seeks solutions to the problems say, don't go around to see it for yourself? And so the president did what is right. At least going to a certain region, it afforded him the opportunity to know the extent of the problem. And that is being dealt with. Again, he cut the sword for the Swami interchange. That has been the cry of the people in the region for so long. To the extent that when the sword was cut, I heard the communication director of the NDC in the Ashanti region, Nuruddin, say that but for their, 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 their cry, the president would never, never have cut the sword for the construction of the interchange. And that even the Konongo hospital that the president came to commission, the president should have given the credit to the Ezra Mahama administration. So I ask myself, if it is that any good thing that is happening under this administration, we have to credit it to the former president, then why wouldn't they come and tell us that the current depreciation of the city, we must credit it to the former president? Because they are saying that the economic achievements of this government started from somewhere. So what about the economic milieu? The problems you are facing this time not coming from, uh, starting from somewhere. And that somewhere is where? Is the s administration, the NDC. And so the president is doing what is right. He needs to know at first hand so that we can deal with the issues head on. Senator, if anybody tells you that within this space, any political party or any individual, I have... I've been monitoring the media space to hear academicians, especially those that, 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 that claim to be the economic doors, to profess solutions. And I see it not coming. Because the last time I heard from the, uh, some members of the IF, 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 Institute of Fiscal Studies and so on and so forth, they pro pro proposed an idea of increasing the prime rate with some of us without economic PAG said it was wrong. The Bank of Ghana listened to them. And that is what is affecting us the more. Because if you look at our problems today, our problems are not demand driven. It is an imported inflation that is affecting all of us. And you can only have 
the imported inflation when you are not producing a lot of the things that you consume locally. So what have you been doing as a government? And that is why, for me, the good people of this country must look at We must not be haunted by the, the fear of failure. But we must be challenged by the success of it. We seem to be we giving up, and, 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 and rightly so, because the largest opposition party in this country, any time they get any opportunity to speak, they spew hopelessness situation. And like your testers, one said, the situation is not going to get better. We are here. So it means whatever they are going to do, they will make sure that we are worse off so that their party will look good in the eyes of the good people of this country. That does not win an election in this country. We have tried the NDC before. We know them. Between 2013 to 2016, in all facets of our economy, not a single policy to move us forward. Yet we survived under them. And that was our come in 2016. The Ghanaian rejected them emphatically. And this show again in 2020. So when I hear people say that, oh, Ghanaians will smell better. As though Ghanaians don't know what was happening then before they made the choice to bring in uh, the, the current president. We are two years into our administration. I mean, the second term. Now, it is surprising that the two years that is left, People are speaking as though all this, uh, we are ended with administration. We can turn things around within a month. And we are working towards that. And I'm assuring the people of this country that next year by this time, people will not be speaking like the way they are speaking today. Because things are going to change dramatically. And I was wondering where my brother got the information that Guta said when they met the president. The president also expressed hopelessness situation. What indeed at that meeting, the outcome of it was that there was going to be a steering committee chaired by the Trade and Industry Ministry together with the National Security to incorporate whatever agreement they will have with government will have with Guta into the 2023 budget. And that already what has come out is that Guta will be having a fixed interest rate, a uh, uh, exchange rate, they, their exchange rate will be pegged at the port over a three months period so that it does not affect duty payment. So that Guta also complained about the fact that, we, that they were not happy with the kind of tax regime. So now you and I know that when it comes to taxation, it is only parliament that is mandated under the constitution to, to as it were, uh, pass taxes. But the act usually comes from the executive. So they have the power to reject or accept. Just like telling us that some, when some of us are saying that the finance minister has to be sacked, and I hear a minority MPs also saying the same, I get mad. You had the opportunity to disqualify the person at the vetting committee. You gave him an overwhelming endorsement, and you turn around, especially when the minority leader come and tell us that you wanted to pass bad ministers for us. So are you thinking positive about the country, or you are thinking about your political parochial interest? Sarah, look, the way the new patriotic party is dealing with the issues, it is tomorrow that Ghanaians would understand. And make no mistake, Ghanaians are not going to make fall for this cheap politics that is going on. That because the world or the new patriotic party or the country is, is in some form of difficulty, all of a sudden the NDC want to get the impression that they are the messiahs. The last time the NDC to his former president, John Mahama had an opportunity on Voice of America. I've told you last week. And that was the most disappointing interview I have ever had in my life. I was uh, hoping to hear a policy direction so encouraging. When he was asked the direct question, Mr. Former President, you are seeking to come back. Given the opportunity, what are you going to do differently to change the destiny of the people of this country? What did he say? He said, when you are given four years, it's so short a time. You can't do much. And that when it comes, he will strengthen institutions. That was all to it. <clears throat> it tells you that the four-year cycle, you cannot do much. So if, if you cannot do much, what are you coming back to do when you know especially that you have only four years to come and govern? Sarah, that, that is what we are dealing with. I have met a lot of NDC communicators on countless platforms. 
I am yet to hear a single policy direction. Unlike the new patriotic party that have identified that the base of our economy is so small, we are still import dependent, raw material dependent, and that we have fashioned a program, a 10 point industrial, industrial uh, industrialization agenda to transform the economy of this country. We are dealing with the petrochemical industry, we are dealing with our fertilizer issues, and so on and so forth. Our buyers seem not to get it. On top of that, we are giving you free SHS to train the minds of the people of this country so that they can take the reins of governance. They won't disagree today, but they know and they know, they know that until and unless the human resource capacity of this country is enhanced, we cannot go anywhere. We have discovered oil, we have gold, we have diamond, we have manganese, we have every, we have uh, to practice. We, are, we still seem to be to be languishing in abject poverty. So what it is missing is that we need to train the human resource. And that is why we brought you the free SHS. We have not ended there. We have realized that to be able to move this economy forward, you need... In the precursor part of our starting in this visit to Ashanti. No, please. You, 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 know, you, know, you know this show better than me. So he's allowed to. This ah. When I was sitting here, Akwata <laughs> Mining was not part of the subject matter. Akwata is in the Which I'm even coming there. <laughs> because we are dealing with the issue systematically. Ambassador is not comfortable. Because for Ambassador, you will not hear what you want to hear here. Me. Anytime you hit former President Don Mahama, then you are not comfortable. Why? Then you stop breathing. Since when did Dr. Dufo become an enemy in the NDC? Or Kodomonsu? It was a campaign. So, <laughs> so that is interesting. You know the way he has started by the way I was flowing, yeah. and he intentionally came in to to just so, so no, dislodge me. If you want to get a view of view, uh, viewers, what they are thinking of you? Watch this. <laughs> oh, this two people. They represent the viewers. So, look, please go ahead. Go ahead. There are there are, are there are millions of viewers out there. For you to be able to determine their views about what I'm saying, we need to visit every room and interview them. But I can assure you that viewers believe that when they have seen one district, one factory, when they have seen 27 of them in Ashanti region, where the president went and commissioned, when they have seen that 1,180 kilometers of road have been added and I cited uh, to Obuasi for you to see. These are not fiction. These are realities. When the people of Obuasi have seen that the trauma and accident center is being constructed, when they have seen that the Sewa hospital is, uh, is near completion, when they have seen that the Afari military hospital is near completion, when they have seen that the Kolongo hospital has been commissioned, when they have seen that the Swami uh, interjet has been, the sword has been cut, what else do you want to see there? And my brother was talking about a contamine, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In 2011, in 2011, which political party was in power? It was the NDC that gave their contamine a reconnaissance license. And in 2012, went ahead to give a contaminant a prospective license. What were those licenses meant for? Was it not to go and dig? In the NDC, and for that matter, anybody alike. And my brother was here, was, was in this country, when they were granted that. They were not granted the, the reconnaissance license and the prospective license to go and do beautification with it. You understand? You gave him the license to go and do mining. In the town of Nimri. In the town of Nimri area. Under NDC. Under NDC. Check it. Go to the Minerals Commission. 2011. Really? In the Samra Boy area there. But the evidence put out so far has been evidence that did back to this administration. So the evidence the, the, the Minerals Commission brought out is to the effect that the license he has does not allow him to enter the forest. That is another matter for us to determine. You understand? But in terms of wound to me and for that matter, contamination starting their business, it started under the S1 administration. The business of mining is different from the permit to enter a forest reserve and mine that forest. So that reserve. is why it is for you and I to go and check the reconnaissance license and the prospecting license that former President John Mahama granted to uh, what, what you call a uh, wound to me.
that could have been granted over any other concession, not the town on the So that is for us to determine. As we speak, the NDC has not come out that they did not grant any license for him to enter the Nimri forest. They were enjoying. The people were taking gold from wound to me. And so now it has become an abattoir. When he realized that, oh, under NDC, I enjoy so much, and my government, why wouldn't that continue? He continued. We are not all happy with illegal mining. But you see, the issues must be put in the right perspective. Or you cannot call a person a Galamse campaign when you do not have any iota of evidence to that, to that, to that effect. Because don't forget, there is a difference between a Galamse or illegal mining and a small scale mining. When you ask one to me today, he will show you his license, uh, his permit to do mining, legal mining, small scale mining, granted by the NDC. So let us always make sure that what we put out there, we are not impugning the integrity of people without evidence. To wrap up, Danado and for that matter, the MPP knows too well that the Ashanti region remains our stronghold. I believe the tour generally was a good one, except for that last slip. I see it as a slip because, no, there is a saying in our local parlance that penny be batimanti. To which, you know, something that a, a child will shout at, an elderly person will just look at it and then smile over it. Because you have seen a lot of things. You understand? That's why when you are going to marriage, uh, into marriage, we always call on the elders to advise. Because they have seen all this in true and true. And so they can advise properly. That harmless question asked by the host on Otech FM, for me, the answer given by the president was on call. It was not supposed to, to be coming from him. I believe that sometimes frustration, if you know that you have constructed about 1,180 kilometers of road, and still people are pushing and asking that question, if you don't take care, you may get angry. But as a president, all like you and I who can get angry, he has no luxury of getting angry. We must always be able to stomach some of the nonsenses or nuances that come out. It is associated with the, with the business of politicking. In any case, someone will ask, nobody begged you to be a president. And it is becoming one too many with our president. Do you remember when the Graduate Unemployment Association asked former President uh, John Mama that we were not having jobs? He told them that he didn't have the magic hand to provide them with jobs. That was also not a good answer. You decided to come and serve us. And servants are always supposed to obey masters. Especially when we give our tax revenues to you. You have no other business of saying, uh, why did you ask this? So that was an anti-climax. Either than that, the president was within his remit to go to Ashanti region to inspect what was going on on the ground, and indeed he showcased. I forgot to even add that when they got to the central market, the kind of project that was going on there is going on there, it will marvel you. It tells you that this is a government that takes the good people of this country very serious. We are not perturbed by what are the naysayers are saying today. But we know that it is posterity that will judge the new patriotic party. We have an election to prosecute in 2024. We are in 2022, and every day counts. We believe that before we get to 2024, a lot of the issues that have been discussed today, they would dare not go there. I will end it here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you're on Facebook, you want to send a message, please use the comment section. I'm reading from the Facebook comment session as so we speak. Are, so yeah, I'll talk, you're just a send a comment there. Um, there's, um, but if you are, I will read your insults, to be very frank. Emmanuel Boeke says, okay, there's a um, uh, empowerment initiative Ghana who says, I, I believe our president should have exhibited emotional intelligence. He lacks it any time he's pushed against the wall. Uh, the seller McBurn of who says the MPP communicator is just daydreaming and blindfolded. He thinks the IMF bailout will save them next year. 
after six years yes, of power, telling lies and bringing the economy to junk status, what can you achieve in your last year? The morning sunshine shows how bright the day will be. This is your sunset, clueless, and sh uh, clueless government. Start packing to go back. Uh, there's also Prince Yusuf. Okay, there's um, Equatoria, which says the MPP is a failed party to rule our country. Um, it says, Mr. Solomon, also, you can't get someone's ideas to rule. JDM on NDC party will keep the ideas when they get the chance to come back. You MPP people with your present has shown that, okay, uh, okay, that part I will read. Samuel Kwesiabwa says, when MPP was in opposition, Dr. Baumia was asked about what MPP would do differently. His answer was, it will not be a doomso economy. Was that a policy direction? There's also Andy Tay who says, Senator, please ask to to provide evidence NDC gave mining permit to go mine in the Nimiri forest. Is that, uh, the no, it means that you have seen it. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. So, where is it? No, I've seen it. Because, I, I, let frankly, to be, to be very frank, there's some evidence that was put out. None of the evidence dates let, back. Let me show you. I'll, I'll, None I'll, of them yeah, dates back to 2011, 2012. Yes. Yes. He, he was given prospecting license. I recorded his license. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Ambassador, so I'll, I'll come to you shortly. So you uh, let me. That's what I said. Uh, there's Post also uh, Bedu Kwame, who says, so whatever success story you think MPP has achieved in this it was through the efforts of the NDC and Mahama to have obtained an IMF law, which your party critically rejected. Don't be boastful. And crediting your MPP for an undeserved effort. There's Joe Adrago who says, Tell Solomon that if those of us in the diaspora are okay, uh, you, including his party members, they will lose just due to exchange rates. Okay. The real issue is when you are sending money to Ghana from your phone using Sun. Uh, okay, he mentioned a few apps. There's no charge, so we don't get the rate as in Ghana. But for about three weeks, the dollar is just running. Uh, he's listening to us from the U.S. He has concerns about the performance of the city. Mano Jen says, uh, please tell Solomon that his Alan cannot win an election today in Ghana. If he's contesting for a general position of an assemblyman today, Alan is out of office already. That's coming from him. Uh, this is, uh, so this is some of the message. This is during Sedinam Van Lair, Godwin, who said there has been series of power outages in Dodwine's environment since last year. Doomsa is back. So just that people are not loud about it. Because most voted for Nanado. And they don't want the, to watch their dirty leanings in public. Stop the propaganda and face reality. Um, Ambassador. Solo, good morning. Good morning. When you are going to marriage, you listen to the advice of older people. And let me take the, the pride in being an older man than you to tell you that what you have just done to the people to the to the people to the people of Ghana is like what happened to Akufo's father in 1969. Come on. In those days, when Akufo's father was passing. The Makwale women were hooting at him. Buzia was saying at Odoko. Buzia was saying at Odoko. They were hooting at him. And I am not surprised about the Ghanaian. The Ghanaian is very patient. What is happening in this country? So, so what is happening in this country? If you were a concerned Ghanaian, truthful. You will not come and sit on television and talk like a court crier. Wait, 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 wait. The CD is $1, 16 CDs. For Christ's sake. So if you have your daughter or son in the U.S. going to school, the school fees is a problem. There are people who have taken mortgages uh, in dollars. And you know their problem? So the least I expected of you to come and sit here and campaign as if nothing is at, nothing is at stake. Look, take the president's traveling record. 
and check how many days he stays in office. This year, he has traveled outside, and as soon as he comes, talk. No wonder if you see the president table, you saw the picture of the president table, it was full. I'm wondering if he even cared to read about things concerning it. Because many times when issues come, they say, oh, it's, uh, I was deceived. I was what? Misled. The admission that he was misled is in itself an indictment of inefficiency. Because how can a president whose order can send this country to war, right? Whose order can put all of us to sleep, be misled? Yet you are sitting here, praising Akufuado like the, the you know, do you know Kankanyami? Uh, yes. Akufuado is now a Kankanyami. You people don't have the courage to look into his face and tell him that, Mr. President, what you are doing is not right. All you are doing is praise singing. Praise singing. In the midst of your second term, you are not thinking about the city, the fall of the city. In the, in the midst of our suffering, uh, you are thinking about breaking the eight. That is what hurts me. And a young man, prospective man like you, young man like you, have the, 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 the pride in coming to defend this situation. So no, so no, the Ashanti region tour had nothing to do with Pekase, but you, you brought in Pekase. No, you are dealing with me personally. I'm, I'm not, not president. but the <laughs> things you said, the things you said are offensive. How can it be offensive to Ghanaians? Let me, I will explain. How can the president if you tell, if you hospital be offensive to Ghanaians? That was not the only thing he said. So let him. But I'm not saying it's attack to me personally. No, he's not. He has not attacked. This is personality attack. He has not attacked you. To be very fair, to has not attacked you. I never attacked you. It's only it's only MPP people who have definition for. It's only your kind. So it's only your kind that have definition the way they want it. When you were attacking me, I just took word power. Senator, you Why did the president go to Ashanti region two times in a month? You remember he has gone to Ashanti region to meet the DCs and the, uh, 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 the National House of Chiefs. Couldn't the president have continued with his tour so that he can save some money for this country? Now he went on tour because the Guta, precisely that's the reason why, the, the Guta had closed their shops. And Ashanti region is our stronghold. So I should go and untangle the issue. That's the only reason why the Ashanti region now, uh, and the president went to Ashanti region. Otherwise, Solo, you said he commissioned what? The foundations of uh, what? He commissioned a, a, a municipal what, the, what, 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 what is the regional minister doing? Okay. What is the role of the regional minister? Well, he was coming down. And that is why I'm telling you, I'm putting it to you that he's wasting our time and money. So the he, president, must, he must not visit the president the is ah so no if you have no drum you, you beat your chest hey ambassador if you have no drum you beat, you beat your chest when the guta is in accra they have closed their shop when market women are crying you get up on a fanfare tour of how many vehicles? I saw one of the videos. Some young lady was counting 60 vehicles. 60 vehicles? Yes. There's one of the video. 60. Black and the white. Registered. registered. 60 vehicles. Check. Lampuses. To uh, her, uh, Toyota, uh, what? Yaris. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you are going through is not easy. So, the, if we voted you for admission of facts, then what is your what, what's your use? What is your use? If all you can say is uh, the, the, there's war in Ukraine, there's COVID. So, you're telling Daniels that until COVID, uh, Ukraine st stopped the war, Russia stopped the war, we are going to be where we are. 
you have not put anything in place to assure us that should the Ukraine war go, go on, Amma, we are going to be saved midway, not so. Have you planted even two, two, two tubers of yam since uh, the Ukraine war started? Oh, yes. Where? Where? I don't want to you want, you want See, to when, no, when there's a, such a crisis, the president sits down with his people and says, look, if these things happen, we'll do this, 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 and that. Alternatives. Okay? It is not going to Kumasi to insult the people who voted for you. And I'm glad that for the first time, you have admitted that what the president said was wrong. But Senna, you know, this is not the first time. At Peace FM, he had the audacity to be that rude to the voter regional Aflao chief. Yes. You remember? That rude. When we were growing up, we, who grew up with Akufado, knew how arrogant he was. We knew it. So they decided to rebrand him and uh, sit in trotros, drink calipo, and those fanciful things. And my friend Kampionu says that the Dagaris or the Dagoma says, you can dress a donkey in any form you, you, you want. But when the race begins, you will see the donkey that he is. How can you, as a president of Ghana, his only pride is, I'm a president. You know, before the, the major question that came, Senna, Mr. President, the last time you came here, you came as a presidential candidate, contestant. Yes, now I'm here as a president. This is all he's in for, to be a president. He doesn't care. Two who's about what is happening. So, the, whatever he does, you have a company. So, no, I'm asking you this question direct. The regulator of the MPP, uh, of the president. You have a president uh -huh. who appoints a, a company director, managing uh -huh. director. He appoints you as the finance director. Mm -hmm. When your books were X plus, that millions. Then the foreign minister returns uh, such mediocre performance of the dollar, one CD, uh, one dollar, at that time in Kumasi, it was 13 plus. He was standing in Kumasi <coughs> saying that the uh, finance minister was the best, that the best thing that has happened to us. That's what he was saying. So no, if your father gives you a company and you, you perform that way, would your father be happy with you? I will have fired the father. Straight up. Thank you. But I've told you, yes, sir. You see, look at this. That's why you are not being fair. That is, look, wait, 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 wait. No, you see? Look, wait. <laughs> look at this. Mm -hmm. A Greek minister. A Greek minister. You started by saying that we have imported some fertilizers. And that people who carry the fertilizer, you can't tell them. And it, when one person carries this employment, when he said it, people of your kind defended that stupidity. So, look, I am advising you as my son, and you, you know how, how I like you. But, 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 but this one. So, no, I, I am advising you because issues. the way you. Do, what is the position of NDC on the current state of the economy? That is what I want to know. Please. I Let want to speak. know. Let him speak. Oh, the, the policy position of NDC uh -huh. is that we will not, we will not allow enterprises uh, insurance to take over all the insurance that should go to SIC. We will not allow that. What we will not do, what we will do is to retrieve the money that Oforata has taken from the, uh, the bonds he Retrieve, uh, collected. What we will not do as a policy, you know, anytime you talk about fundamentals, we look at the wrong direction. You know that. The fundamentals of our economy are not the economic indices. Interest rate, for, uh, what Baumia is talking about. They are not the fundamentals of our economy. The real fundamentals of our economy are the natural resources that we have. 
in the human resources that we have because it is managing the human resource that can generate the uh, the revenue that you want that can revenue uh, bring in the exchange rate not so so up in issue your, your government was looking at the wrong fundamentals and you know, I'm saying that you are using the wrong tools because the mineral resources that should be used you know for the benefit of this country is now the property of private individual like unto me how much gold does uh, Ghana, Bank of Ghana have how much NPP has destroyed our economy not only our economy they have destroyed our water bodies they have poisoned our water bodies and you will not see it now go to my region rivers that used to you know serve our people with transportation and fish and others they are all dead the water is just a make bunch that's what the MPP has done to this country apart from destroying our water bodies bodies you are talking about fear sages so no, are you talking about free SHS? Which of the free SHS that your that's your son or daughter goes? You talk about free SHS as if we didn't have education system in this country before free SHS. Osajifu, Bennett, tell him that when Osajifu realized that there will be poor people in that in country, eh, he created a scholarship scheme. Because he believes that things done by heart are never done right. You just don't go and stand at one school and said, 10 days to come, free SHS. And of all the monies you have borrowed, how much money do you spend on the free SHS? Today, the children cannot even find food to eat. And then you go to a shanty region, which is supposed to be your own stronghold. The people are not clapping for you. The people are hooting at you. Hooting at you. Oh, oh, oh. oh Bobby, were you there? If I was there, I, was, I would have joined them. Oh. Because you would have hooted at your president. Why not? Why not? Let me come to a car. I'll hoot at him. Why would you hoot at him? I would hoot at him because he had disappointed me. But you have never voted for him. Why, my friend? The fact that I didn't vote for him does not mean that when he becomes a president, he should go this, this, this route. And if people are, like us don't talk and allow you the way you talk, you people talk, the president will never hear what is right. This president, since 1972, has led us to this. Let me say to this. After uh, saying that we should uh, trust you uh, from here, try me and I bear you know. President, we are in Sohe. And the MPP, for my own, can't carry me. You'll be in Kanasa. Some can no one say ma. And can one just go away? Call the president to come back home to save us fuel. Today, one gallon fuel is what? Sixty cities. Four liters in a gallon, not so. And if one liter is 15 cities, one gallon is what? 60 cities. What is 4.5? Come again. 4.5. Over 4. 4. 5. So it's over 60 cities. What is the salary of a worker? So no. Be sincere to Ghanaians. What is the what is the salary given to uh, uh, Ghanaians? You can wake up. And uh, yeah, I read uh, Muhammad said, when you uh, magician. Magician. Is, if it's true that Muhammad said that, is that the reason why the CD is uh, 10 CD, uh, 15 CDs? Yes. Because of what Muhammad said. The people in Ashanti were telling you how stupid we were when we allowed the president, you know, to stop road contracts that were ongoing road contracts cocoa road that were ongoing he stopped it and said what he has given it to his nephew to do auditing 10 million dollars gone what came out of that what came out of that so if you leave 
the road, the way somebody was doing it. You leave it and the road gets so destroyed. And you are coming. And you know what they were doing? They sent graders on the, that, that night. They graded the road. And the people said, oh, about what you know, huh? And <clears throat> that is what you saw. And now Paul, now Paul has the audacity to say that it was MPP people, uh, NDC people, that were uh, hired to do that. If NDC can hire Ashanti region, people in Ashanti region, to do that, then we, we, are, we have become a very great party. But it's a second largest like, stronghold in the, in the country. Ashanti but region is why, a second. Why is it that? Mm -hmm. Solo, we have given you eight years. Mm -hmm. You spent six years. Mm -hmm. Ambo number. Ambo number. You know that the 2020 elections, you rigged it. You ah, used, ooh, you rigged wait it. a minute. <laughs> Where are the reports of the, those who were killed at Ayawas, uh, Ablekuma? Where are the reports? Where are the reports of those who were killed at Techeman? Akufuado's second presidency, we, Ghania, eight Ghanaians died. And their blood is on, their, on his head. It's unfortunate. If it's your, if your brother, you will just not sit here and say it was unfortunate. <laughs> Support people being killed because of because of elections. That one should never happen. And the president has anybody. And your president has not even uttered one word about it. Go to Yeji. You saw what happened there, Ejura. A young man. Because he was against the decision to executive, whatever. Short. Short. The president hasn't said one word. And then when you meet people in Kumasi. And you are talking to them about the challenges we are going through, particularly about Galamsi. What you say is that, please, let us fight this Galamsi, because the, otherwise we can't break the eight. Can't break one. Oh. Mm. See. I can't. Is this country about your eight? Senna, is this country about who wins elections or who governs properly? Look at what you are doing. You've run education for six years without textbooks. <clears throat> the other time, the um, a minister of education was, oh, the, you are doing proofreading. I might remember that. We are doing proofreading. The one is at the uh, printers. Six years. No textbooks. And worst of all, you have destroyed the property of this country, which he is going to be searched for causing financial loss. Which one is that? The rich uh, uh, judge's home that you broke. The cathedral. Akufuado want to build a, a cathedral for his God. He then orders a stone from Israel. It is brought by a plane. And that is what he's used as a foundation stone. And if I was Akufuado, I would have taken this so-called cathedral outside Accra. I think that's common sense. Look. And look at the project. And 400 million is gone into that project. So don't you see this as wasteful? Talking about the Santa region too. Of course, I'm not talking. I will, talk, I will not talk about Pekese. <laughs> so no. Where is the 1,000 something road? Where is it starting from and where is it going? MPP, when they say roads, it includes potholes. No, so. It includes potholes. You spent $22 million to solve a problem of $9 million. You see, the banks you closed have turned like ghosts on your economy. They have turned as ghosts on your economy. At the time they closed those banks, was Oforiata's bank the, the, in a perfect state? Was it in a perfect state? The data bank. Was it not a bank? Oh, it's a library. It's a library. Let's be careful. Especially for the youth of this country. You have destroyed our economy. You have destroyed their future. Why haven't you destroyed their future? The 
structures that we put in place for get fund to build more school infrastructure for them what have you done with the get fund so no, what have you done with the get fund mortgage it and chop the money so what does the future of these young people in schools mean you were saying that we are good because we are we are not having doom so not so yes right i am challenging you mm -hmm. You, you have a telephone. Mm -hmm. Call your Minister of Energy, mm -hmm. Napo, to shut down one, 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 one of the plants Mahama installed, one pair, for 10 minutes, and you see what will happen. Why, why? Is it not one of the plants that they are carrying to Kumasi? Isn't what I plan? And even then, you make so much noise. I married you. I married you. I married you. When you were given the chance to look mm -hmm. at I married you, you double, uh, what, quadruple the cost. This kind of deceit does not build a country. So, no, this kind of falsehood does not build a country. I am surprised whether you have also joined the communicators who has been giving six million CDs out of our budget so that they sponsor you. I'm surprised. I know you, you won't take it. You you we did it. The because the way people talk on television, if you are sitting at home, Send a, I send you messages. Mm -hmm. If you are sitting at home and you, the people around you, how they get angry. How they get angry that MPP should have the gas to be talking the way they are talking now. You think bashing Mahama is the only way to go to, uh, to have us uh, uh, bring the aid? Mahama has told you that posterity will judge him and it has, he has been judged. He has told you that, look, in situations like this, you call a national conference so that all experts, we have come to plenings and the rest, you come and sit down. You establish 40 member committee to change the city. What happened? You said they met once. They met once? Yes. Apple, Apple, Apple. When I'm on one soon, in a in Suka, Bokunabasun. Today, all your hope is on IMF. I must have a place. I'm wondering that. Today, all your hope is on IMF. IMF is not for, for the Christmas. I was responding to you, the, your, your precursor uh, discussion. See, IMF is not a solution to our problem. And even if you are going to IMF, you should go prepared. When you are going to your father-in-law's house, you don't go with singlet. You don't go with singlet. You dress properly. The team that went to IMF, where did they meet to discuss? They just went. And you think that two years going, you have any miracle. Now you, are, you believe in miracles and uh, powers and principalities. Now our economy, why? It's not only for Miami economy. But we may have said our economy will find for Miami. Now why? Can can Miami? Can can Miami? In 2040, we had pastors. Mm. Thank you. 2040. If pastors were praying for Thank the city so stability. Thank you. Thanks to Ambassador. And uh, let, before I come to and they are also praying for Kalamsi. Let me do a few <laughs> messages. This is Mano James says, please tell Solomon to stop praising the Kufuato. In fact, to be fair to him, on the matter of what he said in the studio, Solo condemned that. He said he shouldn't have spoke that, spoken that way. And on the matter of calling for the head of the finance minister, Solo has not really called for the head of the finance minister. He has also called for head of the go governor of the Bank of Ghana. So. <laughs> I do. My no, I'm says, surprised about you. Today you tell to deal with me. Okay. So. And then he says, uh, Manu James says, he's not aware that Kufuado in the Suame Kumasi sword cutting message. He said, God should punish all those people who are going around bad things about him. In fact, that was my favorite part. The man read a speech in Chi, in English. And when he was concluding, he concluded in Chi. And actually said that everybody going around Kumasi saying bad things, bad things will be disgraced one after the other. Today, tomorrow. Papa yeah. 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 was wrong. <laughs> I know Abu. Yeah. So that's all. I, I, I have to take a different view from what has been expressed um so far in terms of um, the necessity of the tour itself. Okay. Now, living in Ghana today, 
and experiencing all the hardships that we are all facing day in day out i mean these days is the conversation everywhere um i wanted to hear from the president I really want, you know, like we did with the COVID situation, I wanted him to come out and say something, be responsible um, to his people and for his people. So personally, I wanted to hear from the president. So to that extent, when I heard he was undertaking a tour, I thought, good, right? I didn't think bad. I didn't think wasting the taxpayers' money. I didn't think all those things that everybody um, here seems to think with the exception of... Um, Solomon, I thought good because I thought that this was a golden opportunity for the president to come and speak with us directly, acknowledge his failings, take responsibility for how things are going, and tell us how he was going to work to get us out of the situation. So personally, I thought, oh, wow, great. You know, national tour, he's going to go around and meet the people directly and touch people directly and listen to us directly. Let us tell him how we are feeling and how things are just impossible. It's a crisis situation in Ghana today. So personally, I was like, okay, good, good. Let the man come out and face us. At least we have a chance, an opportunity to talk to him. He talks to us back. And hopefully we get to know, you know, what his plans in terms of solutions would be. Now, so imagine my shock, right? When with this very high expectation, the thoughts have gone the way they've gone. Disaster after disaster. In fact, he should sit at home. If this is the idea of a national tour in a country that's in crisis, and this is how we intend to express accountability, if this is our understanding of accountability to the people who have given us power, then sit at home. The president has no business going around literally insulting us on top of the crisis. That, because this is, what, this is what the tours are. This, the tours are, for lack of more technical and perhaps more sophisticated language, these tours are basically adding insults to injury, full stop. That's what the tours are. I mean, look at Galamsey. Sena, look at how Galamsey is a national crisis. How everybody in this country, including us as media, you know, uh, practitioners, have taken it upon ourselves as personal, um, um, what do you call it, uh, 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 advocates. People are, you know, by themselves creating music, creating songs for Galamzees. People are, I, I saw uh, Araba Kumsen's um, skit, you know, telling us you know, approaches to, like, everybody, literally all hands on deck as private citizens doing all we can in our small corners, to make sure that Galamse goes away. And what does our president do? Somebody who has been loudly identified. The whole of Ghana has identified this personality, rightly or wrongly. I will not sit here and act as though I have the answers or I know what I don't know. I can only speak to perception, which is everything. Now, this person has been named as a campaign of Galamse in this country. Now, when the question of Galamse was being posed to the president, this person was sitting right by him. Oh, wow. That's, that's how you are showing us, um, what's the word? Accountability. Th th this is how you show us that you, you, you are genuine about your fight against Galamse. And this is a president who actually said that if he's unable to solve Galamse, he, he put his presidency on the line about Galamse. And yet, when the question on Galamsey was asked him on the tour, the person sitting by him is the campaign of Galamsey. Mr. President, don't go far. Just look to your left or look to your right and deal with the man seated right there. Show us that there's some real commitment to the lip service you've been paying us about Galamsey this whole time. Don't do too much. The person seated right by you, right. him, deal with him. Right there. Don't go far. I mean, it's unbelievable Sena, it is unbelievable for me as a Ghanaian the extent to which this administration is irresponsible unaccountable it's just what, what's how do you say this in three um 
literally, I don't care. It's what this administration is. You are talking to us about wanting to find Galamsey, Sina. And all the names that have come up so far, all the companies that have come up so far, are linked directly to your, 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 your administration. Directly. And yet, every now and then, the president speaks to us about Galamsey. Ah, am I the one that's crazy, or has the whole country gone mad? What are we doing? Trust. Let's see the commitments you speak about. Put his job on the line, right? Nothing happened. I mean, Nothing. just lip service. Oh, everything is just talk, 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 and fluent English talk. I must add. That's that's all it is. Nothing more. No commitments. No. Look at how we dealt with Aisha Wang. My goodness, we don't have time for that. Let me move on. That issue, we don't even have time for that. But on the Galamse issue, flop. Finance minister, the president did not only say he's top five. Oh, he said excellent. A president said, the finance minister, the person who is said to have been an economic messiah, who brought us from IMF, and is holding all of us. And taking us right back to IMF is top five excellent minister. The person under whose watch today the city is 16 seats. I was still at 15. If I hadn't come here this morning, I wouldn't have known that we've, we've, we are 16 already. I was still stuck at 15. Sina, Wednesday, and, I've, and I made the example here um, um, sometime back. I spoke about how um, we used to buy the, 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 the paper, the rim. Um, a4, A4 paper for 18 cities and how it had gone to 23. And I was literally going out of my mind about that. Guess the price today. 45 was the 46 cities. Oh. From 18 cities. So do you understand what I'm saying? From 18 cities, we buy it now at 46 Ghana cities. I mean, and you're telling us that the, the, the finance minister is top five excellent ministers that should stay at post. Now, let's speak about what he says about that great minister. He says, and, and that one, I, I was so shocked, I actually, uh, I stopped the car for a minute. He said, um, the man had been given a role to play, and he actually used the word basic, that he was playing his basic role. Is that all we are good for, Ghanaians? The bear, the basics. So, for you, to make it to a Kufwado's excellent five, you, you do the basic. You do the basic and you're in top five excellence position. Is this what Ekufuado asks us to try him on? Is this where we are at presently, today? Ghana. The, 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 I mean, how, 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 how does the president understand his role? How does he understand his role? How does he understand what he owes us as a people. Does he appreciate who he is? And, and, and what, what he is means to us as a people. And I mean, bread and butter issues. It's shocking that the top five, to use the president's own words, give us the basics. So because he's a finance minister, and Ghanaians are not dying of hunger. No, let me use that Greek minister. Because he's a Greek minister. And we are not all falling dead out of hunger. He's top five. So the president is waiting for us to literally start falling down and dying of hunger to realize that the Greek minister is not performing. Perhaps he's waiting for the dollar to get to a hundred to realize that the finance minister is not performing. I mean, what are we saying? Now, there's something that the president needs to understand. In any organization, feedback is essential. Now, I insist that feedback is crucial to anything that you are doing, which is why for most of these shows, we give out a phone line. For most of the things we do, there are cars that have numbers behind and say, if he's not driving well, call this number. Feedback is crucial because sometimes you don't know what you are doing. People need to let you know, right? How does the president handle feedback? For him, feedback is naysayers. Let's look at what they said about the Global Citizen Awards and that buoy. They said the NDC um, bars people to the Global <coughs> Citizen Awards to go and boo, boo, boo the president. Are we serious? The president is saying, Mwenimbe Gwasi. Ah. 
Yeni beguase. I can't buy food. I can't buy food. Meni be meni beguase. Meni beguase. That's what we are telling him. Eni beguase. You know, is the fact that we can't live like this as Ghanaians. This is eni beguase. So if the person is telling us, assuring us that yeni beguase, hey my goodness, what does he have in store for us? Should we all be running? I mean, how can we completely misunderstand our role? How, how can any president misunderstand his role to this extent? It's so shocking. Because we are telling you that life is hard. Unbelievable. Now, this whole attitude to feedback, you know, um, and I heard someone use the same word, naysayers, and <laughs> stop it. Immediately, the MPP has to have a crisis meeting and decide within its ranks that there are some words that they should quickly take out from their vocabulary. Naysayers, take it out. Yeah, Do away with those kind of words. Because right now in Ghana, nobody wants to hear that. Like, we're already upset. We're already angry. We, we can't eat. A hungry man is an angry man. And we're all angry already. Don't come and anger us anymore by calling us naysayers, detractors. No. And mind you, this country is not only made up of people who are in NDC and M MPP. There are others. Hello, when did we forget about the floating voter? Have we forgotten so soon that there's something called the floating voter? Or do we think that Ghanaians are not discerning? Hey, there are MPP people who, would ev who, are, who are angry and who would tell you that they are angry. But that's not. We are acting as though the country is so strictly divided along the lines of NDC and MPP. And... Even within the NDC and MPP, people don't have common sense. Yeah. That's what we are telling Ghanaians. That the fact that you are MPP means that you don't have common sense. That if you go to the markets and things are hard, you have to say that things are good just because you are MPP. And if you are an NDC person and you go to the markets and things are hard, you can't say that things are hard because you are NDC. What are we saying? Now we are being told that the whole media has been bribed. Wow. <laughs> so we've, we've, we've all been bribed. Ghanaian media. We've been bribed. I, I don't even want to talk about it. I, no. I, I, I want to keep it nice tonight. Let, let, I mean, this morning. Let, let, let's keep it nice. I was talking about this um, uh, uh, Akim Akroso Hootin. You know, I, I'm in a WhatsApp group. And somebody put the, the booing of the president in Akim Akroso. This was sometime last night, you know, um, onto the, in the eastern region, onto the page. And... The general commentary was that, why didn't anybody add rotten eggs, you know, um, to go along with the, with the... This is how angry Ghanaians are. Now, in all of this, we are still hearing phrases like, breaking the eight. And he, I'm so happy to hear what, 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 what the, the uh, uh, Asante Hini told him. He says, go out and tell your successors. And someone has been saying that, like, this time, I heard it this morning, I wrote it down. Go out and tell your success stories. Okay, the president is telling us his success stories, right? Isn't this what we are hearing from the tour? And those are sound bites we are hearing. And, and let me use um, uh, my, daddy, my daddy's uh, words. He says, when you have no drum, you beat your chest. He was advised to go out and tell his success stories. And in the absence of any success stories to tell, he beat his chest by insulting Ghanaians. That, that, this is what has happened on the toast. I want to keep everything strictly to the toast, right? He followed the advice of Otunfo that go out and, you know, um, broadcast your success story. And in the absence of a success story to, 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 to go out and, and here we are, insults. Like I'm saying, if the president really has nothing to say, let him sit at home and sleep. Honestly, he needs to sit at home and he needs to sleep. As for this breaking the eighth thing, free advice to the MPP. Call the president to order. That's one. One, call the president to order. Now, when he says that he doesn't care, vote for the NDC, I believe him. I believe that genuinely he doesn't care. I believe him. Because really, what has he got to lose? What has he got to lose? When the president sits in Kumasi, his World Bank, now, I was so shocked. I was like, wait. What is happening here? Does he not realize where he is? When he sits in Kumasi and he says, vote for the NDC, I don't care. You can't threaten me, 
right? And you see, the host of the show is so interesting. He said, when, when he said, um, <laughs> he used a, a first phrase. There was the first thing he said. He said, I think he said, I don't care. And the, the mom was like, oh, because you're going to do it, right? The, 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 the host was, you know, sort of guiding him the, uh, where to go. Yes, yeah, like, oh, because you're going to say, no, 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 that's not what I mean. I mean that I don't care. They can't, you know, um, the, vote, the vote the for... The phrase he uses, no problem. No, he said, no problem. Thank you. So now you're so right. When he said, no problem, the host said, oh, because you're going to solve the problem. He said, no, I don't care. You can't threaten me. Yeah. You can go ahead and vote for the NDC. I believe the president... I believe that he genuinely does not care that the NPP loses the election. He doesn't care. Because you can't go and sit in Kumasi, an NPP president, I mean, elected from the NPP, and say that I don't care, vote for the NDC. In Kumasi, he genuinely does not care about breaking the eight. Now, the if, I were, the 6, votes. if I were in the NPP today, <sighs> I would be calling the president to order. I will not be sitting here defending him because he genuinely doesn't care about the party that I belong to. And if all of us as Ghanaians, if we are perceptive enough, this should tell us about the MPP as a political party and how they feel about us as Ghanaians. This is a party, excuse me, <coughs> this is a party that does not takes us completely for granted, basically, such that if things are so bad, and everything points to the fact that it, it, they don't care, they would rather continue to sing the praise of the man that's happily sinking their party. They would happily sing their own party. Now, if I were anybody that had any say in the NPP, first of all, you call the president to order, you insist on a reshuffle, because presently, the center cannot hold. I think it's a little too late in the day, but at least it will save a little bit of an image. I wonder why his candidate, Alan Chamantin, is still at post. I Seriously. wonder why. What is he still doing there? Why is he still at post? When you have your chance, please answer that question for me. It's, it's amazing to me that today, because you see, what it means is that at the end of the day, Alan Chamantin cannot come back and tell me that he wasn't part of this administration. Mm -hmm. He's a key member of this administration. He's been involved in everything that's happened. He's still involved. And we are all going now. As for Baumi, I don't even want to talk about that one. Half of the promises that have landed us here today were from him, directly from him. He gave us those promises, direct. So for him, I won't even touch him. But for even Alan Tremonton, he is still at pause to today as we speak. So who in the NPP would have the morals? What's the word? All right. I wanted to use a, 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 a more, you know, word to come back to us as Ghanaians and ask us for anything. As I advise the NDC, let me advise the NDC too. I was watching um, one of these um, NDC communicators, a member of parliament, I won't mention his name for very good reasons, um, on one of these um, review um, shows. And he said that, I mean, he, he eloquently spoke about the difficulties, the crisis, all of those things. And then he added on to it that he hadn't eaten the day before or something like that. And everybody in the room was like, oh, ho. Are you kidding me? Are you a member of parliament? You haven't eaten. <laughs> ah. No, what, see, what, what is this? He has shared all the money to the constituents. Oh, he should come on. He should give us a break. Listen, we are not joking, no. Oh. See, now. The politicians need to understand that it's not a laughing matter. Oh. We're not here for jokes. Oh. We can't buy fuel. We can't buy food. Ah, it's not a time to be joking with us in this country. You see, me, as I sit here, I'm, I'm, I'm already upset with our members of parliament. And every time I come here, I'm, I've done it so much. They are calling me and they are speaking to me about it. So now, not that I'm censoring myself. Nobody can censor me. I'm just taking a chill pill to they, they because I know they'll do something again before the, 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 the two years is up and I'll get them again. I, I, I don't, I don't, you know. But, when you have an opportunity to communicate at this point in this country, regardless which side you, you, you are on, communicate from the heart. Speak from a place that as I sit at home and I watch you, you don't get me angry. Can we find some solutions? I mean, at this point, can we find some solutions? Because it's, 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 it's becoming hopeless. 
You listen to an NDC communicator, you want to throw something at your TV. When you listen to an NDC communicator, you, need, you want to hear something calming, soothing. So both sides should take it easy. I, honestly, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I'm just, I, I don't even know what, what, what to say at this point. Like, our politicians are failing us. I have to admit, our politicians are seriously failing us. And at this point in our nations, you know, I mean, we need the men, right? Today, and I was having this conversation earlier, if somebody calls for a demonstration and people do not show up for that demonstration, it will not be because we are not facing hardship. It will be because of a total lack of trust in the people who will lead the demonstration. Let me say it. That's our situation in Ghana today. If somebody goes and calls for a demonstration today and people don't turn up, let nobody misunderstand that to mean that Ghanaians are happy with what is happening in this country or Ghanaians are okay and we are happy. No. It will be because we will look at the people that are going to and we will ask ourselves questions. And the politicians need to, on both sides, stand up and be counted. This is the time. Show us that some of you have an interest at heart. This is the time for that. As for the MPP, they have failed. In capital letters, failed. They have no solutions. They have no ideas. They are clueless. They don't know what they are doing. The MPP administration, I won't take anybody out. All of them, they have no clue what they are doing. As for them, it's a sinking ship, right? But the NDC, please, get your act together. Thank you. Ooh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> thank you, Amma. And one thing, I think one thing a lot of people miss in these old discussions, what happened, I think in the afternoon or the evening, after President Kufuadu had gone on the radio station and said those things, I heard Mr. Lachamantin subsequently trying to quell the fire. So that tells you there is an issue. Uh, and I agree with you. I agree with you. Somebody needs to tell the president that it is not for him to be talking about breaking the eight. He has no aid to break. His eight is over. What he needs to do is to work hard enough to ensure that they are in the position to break the eight. He's not doing the work. He's just shouting about breaking the eight. He's ending the MPP. <laughs> He's ending the MPP to death to the MPP right now. Hmm. That's what's happening. Thank you. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. He has labored. He has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer. Are you put off by the very low standards that most accommodation facilities offer? Well, it's time to heave a heavy sigh of relief. Colindale's Court is here. here. Located at Birch Street, Community 12, off the Tema Motorway, Collindale Court offers you top-of-the-range short and long-stay accommodation steeped in luxury. Our two-bedroom apartment is what you and the family need for your weekend getaway. While our one-bedroom apartment gives you a peaceful ambience to work from home. Our rooms are fully furnished, air-conditioned and come with all you need at your beck and call. A well-stocked kitchen, dining area, Wi-Fi, DSTV, Netflix access, and an endless list of other amenities, thus creating a unique sense of place far exceeding your expectations. Our gym and swimming pool exactly suit your preference for keeping fit and recreational activities. We also have a very spacious conference room for your business meetings. Collindale Court offers even more. Our rooftop bar is a thing of scenic beauty, giving you and your loved ones a bubbly night life of music and dance. Call us now to make your reservations. 0243-186017 or 0244-258-332. Collingdale Court. Exceptional, Exceptional comfort, comfort for, for beautiful, beautiful people. people. Labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer.
has labored, he has suffered to lead his people. Thank in you very much for staying with us on the Mother of All Talk Shows. I like you and I. You are live on Pan African Television. Don't forget, we are live on uh, Facebook. Pan African Television is the page. We are live on YouTube, Pan African TV. I've been reading some of the messages from Facebook today. Majority of messages are ang anger messages. A lot of them I cannot actually read on TV. Uh, yes, it seems to have agitated a lot of people. You are doing quite well with that. Uh, well, Solomon Owusu is still in the studio with me. And then uh, there's Comrade Bernard Mona. Amar Pratt uh, is here. And then uh, Ambassador Sampiale is sitting right opposite me. Yes, this is one friend, Philip from Bawe. As a regular listener to Elijah and Elijah, um Okay. No. There's a Tafai in America. I'm surprised to see the president who when he was an opposition leader begging people to try him and he fulfilled at their knees because we are sitting on top of money but we are dying in hunger now when people ask him questions or remind him his promises he may he made them to know to now tell the people to go and vote for ndc uh, so now this is like telling someone to go to hell well we'll move on to the discussion on the closure of various shops in accra and uh, Gamanche has intervened as predicted last week. Uh, we, in fact, the traders admit that even I spoke to one of, I think it was uh, tr uh, the one trustee who told me that, well, when they were going to, on the, to close their shops, they knew that a problem would not be solved. They just wanted to be listened to. They've been trying to get someone to listen to them, what the problem is. And it looks like finally they have an opportunity of sitting before the president and talking to him. They are hoping that something actually comes out of it. I start with uh, Mr. Mona once again. And uh, you have 10 minutes on that. Senator, um, we must situate that the situation of murder. And I cite an example and I have restrained myself from make, mentioning name, a Ghanaian contractor. And Solomon is very much aware that Ghanaian contractors have not been paid. They borrowed money, not only from banks, but even from relatives and other people who probably even went to their banks to go and over Boro to come and support the work that the state has given to them to do. So for a very considerable period, I had not seen this uncle of mine who is a contractor. And when I call, somehow the call doesn't go through. So I chose to visit only to get there and my uncle was there struggling to sit. What is it? Before he could say a word, he started crying. Uncle, why? He said, look at what Akufado and his government has done. They owe him over 7 million Ghana cities for works that he has done. He has done everything, borrowed money from everywhere in order to execute the job. At the end of the day, he used most of his property, including personal properties, to go and collect loans. And his three. He was at home one morning. His kids were on the way to school. They got out only to see that the court had instructed the bank to sell the house that he was living. So the kids ran back to the room to say, Daddy, there is a notice on the wall. The court has secured a junction to sell our house. Taking it for granted, he just walked out. And when he saw the thing, that was where he collapsed. They rushed him to the hospital, and he came back deformed. Many Ghanaian contractors have died. Majority of them have lost their property. Some of them are incapacitated, just as this other man has been incapacitated, because government is not able to pay them what is due them. This is coming at the time when nurses' trainings are not paid. I'm not talking about the nurses. Majority of them have left the country. This is coming at a time 
when teachers trainees are not paid, in fact, the teachers themselves are struggling for their, their, their other entitlements. And so, we live in an economy when nothing is at work. The people who are managing the economy have failed. And president goes around the country and then gives a vote of confidence mm. to the people who have run this country as zero. And you see, if you understand economics, Eco 101, one of the factors that hamper any economy is speculation. And when people speculate, and you take it for granted, it can sink your economy. The thing that many people are speculating, and in fact no more speculating, are saying, is that the finance minister is responsible for the economic decline that we have. But he's Akufado's brother. And any time, let's check the records, any time President Akufado passes a vote of confidence in the finance minister, the market starts to run at a minus. So, the recent two days, look, when Akufado went to Ashanti region and the question was put about the economic situation, and said, no, he has confidence in his team. And said, look, they helped him to achieve in his first term. There is no justification to remove him. The city was at 11 cities. Today we are 16 cities. Just by saying that, you still have confidence in your finance minister. You know, I don't get the sense. This is a finance minister. At a time when those of us who are opposed to even the IMF, because the IMF can never be a panacea to any country's economic woes. But those who believe in the IMF say, no, the way you have overborrowed, the only solution is to go to the IMF. Seth Tepe even said that. He had seen IMF officials as far as me, that much that they were here. But Ken Oforata will not engage them. When we said so, he decided that he was going to go on a reckless implementation of an electronic transfer levy. Hmm. And started cal calculating some, some quantum of money that they will get based on the number of people that are on Momo. 6.9 billion. Ah, yes. billion. So when they did all those, their mathematics, we told them that, look, Back. uncle, your grandson is in school. His phone is linked. It's Momo. So when I'm sending him money to go and buy some textbook, some pencil or something, you think that that person is on Momo, so you want to tax that money. We told you that you have not done your calculation right. You will not get the flows. We will not do it. They said the option available to us was to either do the electronic transfers or they go to the World Bank, IMF. And when we said no, they insisted that the e levy was the solution to the problems that we had. Senna, they took the matter out of parliament and they went on what they call a town hall meeting. In the town hall meetings, Ken Oforata in Tamale said that we are, we are a proud people. IMF, we will not go. John Kuma went to Parliament and said that we will not go to IMF today, we will not go to IMF tomorrow, we will not go to IMF tomorrow next. These people said they don't have any trust whatsoever in an IMF. Then President realized that no, you have gone, you are looking for two billion. You only got 750. Things are not working. So Mr. President then instructed that government should go to the IMF. This time, it was not communicated from the Ministry of Finance. It was by Kojo Opong Kuruma, Minister for Information. Now, people who don't believe in the IMF are the ones President Akufuado, you have sent to go to the IMF to go and do what? <coughs> because their negotiation will, be, will come at the back that we don't have confidence in the IMF. So that alone should tell Mr. President that no, this is not the man that you should be putting forward for any discussion. I said David Cameron, when he was Prime Minister for, for, for Britain, 
And they went on the Brexit vote, which he was against. As soon as he lost the vote, he said, I cannot lead you to, to, through the Brexit uh, circumstances. Ken Oforata, who doesn't believe in IMF, John Kuma, who doesn't believe in IMF, are today going to the IMF to go and sit down. And so President Akufado doesn't understand this one too. That any time you say you have confidence in Ken Oforata, the markets respond with a negative. You know, let's put it this way, Solomon. You are a member of Guta. You are a member of Guta. And the Guta members know, and I say this, uncle, when my, I was involved in an accident, they did an estimate and gave me a debt of 25000 We said we cannot pay, but start fixing. This was in April. April, the dollar was 5.6. Right? Today is 16. I will be paying 25000 Because that is what we calculated in cities. At the 25000 at the time, that was almost about $4,800. Today, <laughs> how much is $4,800? Today, how much is $4,800? That is how much they will be losing. So in essence, that 25000 today, if I am supposed to pay the dollar with, I should be paying about 85000 So when I go and pay, will the person be in the same position to go and buy the same parts and come and sell? Yep. The person's business is gone just by the fact that we owe. And so, people without doing anything, their businesses and their money is gone. I play basketball with some of the people who manufacture plastics in this country. And we're having a discussion, and I told them that, look, the way I look at things, by December, we'll get to 15. Yesterday, when I went to play basketball, I said, Bernard, Bernard, come, 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 come and see. The thing is 16.2. <coughs> me, I told them that in December, we may get to 15. We are 16.2 as of yesterday. In fact, that was a prediction, I think, of the World Bank too. 15 by December. And in October, we are in 16. And you know, companies will start to declare dividends. And money will be taken away. Sure. So when they declare dividends and money is being taken away, you understand the impact on the economy. And the worst and foolish thing that we have done, we established the forest bureaus. The forest bureaus decided that, look, um, many people cannot come to my base and come and change money. So I will send people to some vantage points. That is my forest bureau, so they can do exchange for me. We sent IGP and his boys to go around chasing the people. So those who now have the foreign currency, they have decided, that, okay, we are not selling. They have locked their money there. Just by locking their money, you know they have appreciated. They have the money. Correct. They said, we are not giving because we are sending our people. Because if I am sitting in um, the gutter by Nima with my forest bureau there, and I know that people are around the airport, and I said, my boys, come and be there. Somebody will come and then you will change it. And then they are there, and you come with your police and come and arrest the people, and I have to come and pay money in order to release them. I will lock my money and keep it. It come is right. my dollars. Uh, so in. that yeah. is the impact that we are having in our nation. So when we sit down, President Akufado comes to tell us that, look, I have confidence. Any day he says he has confidence, the CD depreciates. Any day he says he has confidence in this team, that has failed us, the CD continues to depreciate. And you don't want Guta members to go on strike. When they go on strike, you have people who are learning the Akufado's way of communication. Michael Bafi and Co. coming to say that Guta members 
are doing this in order to make the MPP unpopular. Yet Guta members contributed money in 2016, 200,000, and gave it to Akufado to go and do campaign. They are members of the MPP. But they cannot say that because they are members of the MPP, their way of life, their source of life and living should collapse. They are saying that do things so that the economy will normalize. Okay. We can continue with our business and probably even support our political party. Here we are with a very disastrous, calamitous president who doesn't understand his left from right, keeping the square pegs in round holes and thinking that they will get us any way out. Okay, I, thank you. I, I just feel... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade. Thank you. Uh, this is... Uh, okay. This is good morning, Sena. When we were all questioned uh, not to make Nanado president, we didn't listen. This... Na, that Nanado had the effrontery to say the people could vote for NDC if they so, which is testament to his true character. So, the last time I was in the office of the NPP, there was no check from Guta to suggest they pay 200,000 cities to the new patriotic because party. Because you are not a member of they the did new patriotic pay. party. If you are a member of the new patriotic party, you will know that uh, Ken Oforiata, who was but not can, a can member of the NPP, was a fundraising uh, chairperson. They sent Paul Afoko, uh, Kwabna Aje, Ajapong, and others because they said that all monies must come to the political party. So Tickle okay. yourself and laugh. So a PNC, can, can, can a PNC really... member lecturing me on an NPP issues. Yes, because you don't know. <laughs> so I still stand by the position that Kuta never contributed any 200,000 to the new patriotic party. As far as you know, you or as you are making a, a, you are as saying far that as the record shows. As far as the record shows, I have gone to the finance and administration. I have looked at the audited report. I have checked everywhere. Mm -hmm. Nowhere did Guta contribute any 200,000 cities to the MPP. Let us put it as that. I also want to agree with Ama that the people of this country day in and day out are losing faith in politicians it's a fact and that is one of the symptoms you will see in 2024 that if care is not taken people may not actively take part in the 2024 elections and i mean coming events cast their own shadows i just gave you an example of today the ndc is having their elections go everywhere it's as though Nothing is happening. People are losing faith in our politics. Just about two weeks ago, right. parliamentarians <laughs> across the globe met in Rwanda. And Rwanda, one of the issues that came out was that everyone is saying politicians are not being straight with the people. So the question I always ask myself is, what is the lacuna? What is the difference uh, with what we promise and what we are able to deliver? You see, the story that Bernard gave, I'm not sure he was conjecturing. And even if he was conjecturing, that is the reality of the day. The kind of bad politics we have been doing in our part of the world. That people go for loans to do roads, build hospitals, and instead of government paying them, refuses to pay, and they have their properties so I have been a victim of this whole thing before. Look, when we come and sit on set, those that test with anger, you must manage your anger. The mere fact that I sit here on behalf of the new patriotic party, does not mean I take a dime like I'm You know, I'm not cutting all these uh, problems for me. But let me put the issues in a right perspective. That the mere fact that I come here as an MPP member does not mean I enjoy from government and rightly so party is different from government in fact if we had our way as a political party probably would have sacked all civil servants who are not non MPP and replaced them with MPP members but the law does not ad allow that look in these difficult times as a member of Guta and I rightly supported their 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 their, their, their uh, 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 what do you call it closure of shops Day in and day out, you are losing your capital, working capital. It's not funny. 
and you have no assurance, what would you do? Would you continue to sit down to have your working capital lost? And especially when we have a very callous financial system, our banks are just sharks. You go for a facility from any bank in this country, and as though they are praying for your downfall. So that in the midst of difficulties, that's why you see these banks taking people to court and killing people. And that was the main reason why when I heard some professionals call on government to increase prime rate, I said, where, where were they coming from? Because this, in this country, we give much too, too much credence to people with PhDs. He has never sold in his life before. He has never entered into farming before. He sits in the classroom. He thinks that what the book is saying, all things being equal, being the underlying principle in all economic that issues, is should de define everything. That is for you. So they call on the Bank of Ghana, uh, the governor of Bank of Ghana, to increase prime rate. And now the prime rate has been increased to 24%, shooting everybody's lending rate into, in the 30s. Now, who, those that are selling are not able to sell. So if you are unable to sell, it means you cannot honor your obligation to repay. I'm not going to say something that for me should address. You know, all that we are doing today, we must begin to look at solutions. The NDC rather seem to be happy that there are difficulties, but no, they are not they happy they, they that they have to. You see, the solutions that we have in this country... The solutions are available, mm. but sometimes I don't know whether when we get power, we begin to think otherwise. How well are we taking over the ownership of this economy? Look, there is a simple phenomenon. When you, when you increase, when the city depreciates to even 20 and you go to the market, you get the dollar. Is that not the case? What it should tell you is that the dollars are in this country. Anybody that is telling you that we don't have dollars in this country might be coming from Azerbaijan. In fact, and that goes to, to confirm the position that Bernard was saying. You know, perception is everything in any, uh, in any situation. We started calling on the president to sack Ken of Rata, not today. So that that alone can turn around things. People will not listen and will continue to do what they are doing. Going forward, I believe time is now that if the president is not cracking the whip, the minister himself might do Ghanaians and the honorable thing by stepping aside so that the renewed confidence. You know, sometimes you have good intentions. I am not sitting here and thinking for a moment that the finance minister does not mean well for this country. It doesn't. But maybe it means well for this your country. actions and inactions are perceived in a, a different way. And for that matter, the people that must give you the confidence, the business community, are not seen in that light. And so they are hoarding their dollars. When that happens, it affects everyone. Going forward, every situation has its positive and negative sides. Depreciation has its positive side. So, there was one or one that you were talking about. There are a lot of positive in, uh, with uh, depreciation. That is if you are a major exporter. If, but you can only be a major exporter <laughs> when you are producing that much. That is why I do not want the National Democratic Congress to, uh, to, to, as it were, see the various interventions by this government as a mere joke. Right. If we are able to enhance our one district, one factory well, if you are able to tackle the extractive industry well, so that Ghanaians will also begin to own some of the big mining companies and not be interested. The economy we have is in the hands of Indians and Lebanese. When the British and the Americans decided to live a while, they left us in the hands of Indians and Lebanese. The small that is left is being taken over by our, our, our Monaida brothers. To the extent that when they decide to take the shops at Tiplo, Tito Lane, our brothers will be crying. So let us all together say never again. As for this uh, situation, we will come out. But how well are we going to come out? Are we coming out so that tomorrow we we'll go back? You mean the trade sector has been taken over by foreign? The trade. And we have a minister the, responsible. That is why when he came, I told you that between 2013 to 2016, you had done nothing in that sector. So we have to come and meet a backlog. And that backlog is what he's dealing with. 
Back on, 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 on serious policy direction in the trade sector. Can you imagine a whole government going to open commander when the president then recently told us that by his A-level economics, you needed to put up a factory before thinking about raw material? That is part of the problem. When we are importing that much of sugar and that we had commander to deal with part of our forest and we decided to play politics with it. Thankfully, the Minister of Trade and Industry together with this government, has worked tirelessly to ensure that very soon, Commander is in place. So you have six years. You've been growing sugar cane for six years. <laughs> you see, when we came, a lot had gone wrong. So now, we have decided or we have identified a supply chain for the time being where the raw sugar will be, will be imported into this country to feed the factory whilst we uh, grow the sugar locally. So you've not even grown the sugar. No, 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 no. We, we have started the nursery. So you are not going to. You are not we have started the nursery. Oh. We have identified various places that we are. The nursery will, uh, uh, is going to start. Meanwhile, production will start because definitely you must get raw material to feed it, which we have identified that channel which will be feeding the factory. But our brothers, can you imagine if we came to meet a, 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 a commander sugar factory that was working, would we have abandoned it? We wouldn't have done so. Now, in terms of Guta and why they have stopped, okay. they are, uh, 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 now they have reopened. Is that not the case? Please land on that one. They Please. did so because having met the president the and also the trade minister, it was agreed that a working committee will be formed to take on board all their issues. What has been their issues? About the depreciation of the city and also tax issues. Now, on the depreciation of the city, I mean, per the arrangement that has been reached, or the agreement that has been reached, uh, the city to the dollar will be pegged at a certain rate for a period of time so that it does not affect the duties that they pay at the port. That is a laudable uh, 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 policy, just like what is being done for the OMCs. But for that, I'm sure you'll be buying a, a liter of diesel or uh, 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 gasoline at, say, 30, 30 cities. But some of these things are what is cushioning. I believe that in all, we must concentrate on building Ghanaians to take over the ownership of this economy. Not this usual useless politicking. That this party comes, they look at your face, send a number you were with MPP, and so it is NDC's time. We should not allow you to do your thing. That is 18th century mentality. That must not be encouraged by anybody. And I believe the young ones that are coming up must not. You see, when Ambassador is talking to me, so that you are my son. What have been your legacy that you have left to the kids? You have told them, you have told the young communicators to be antagonistic. To the extent that any communicator that goes on the platform, when there is an issue and is presented as an MPP member, that person is afraid to speak against his political party. These were the, 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 the teachings that were left or bequeathed unto us by the elders. We hope that it is not bequeathed unto the younger generation. Thank I'll you. end it here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Solomon. Uh, this is uh, Dave Akple who says, uh, Solomon is alleging that voter turnout may reduce in 2024 as a result of voters losing interest in politicians. I want to state emphatically that that is one of their mind games. They intend to play on Ghanaians to demotivate them from voting, just like 20, 2016. They released in 2016, when voter turnout reduced, it favored the MPP. So... The plan is to use the same strategy. There's uh, Prince Harry, who says he is aspiring to be Eastern Regional Deputy Communications Officer of the NDC. He says, in a serious country, Dr. Baumia and his EMT members should be apologizing to Ghanaians and resigning because they have failed us woefully. My question to Dr. Baumia is, what will he tell us in 2024 when he's given the nod to lead the MPP? <laughs> I must have done that. I am <coughs> very worried about the economy of this country. And to the extent that our trading community should decide to embark on industrial action. I'm also worried to hear from Solo, and rightfully so, that people are getting fed up with politicians. 
is because of actions, thoughts, and commissions and inactions of some politicians. Most Ghanaians, solo, most Ghanaians were appalled that as of today, the Ghana at 50 toilets, Ghana at 50 uh, libraries, projects. projects, are nowhere to be found. Even though we voted 200 million cities for that. All right? Most Ghanaians are very appalled that because of the political philosophy of the MPP, property owning, converting public property to private gain, we are where we are. Otherwise, how could we have woken up one day to hear that the 1879 Atimota Forest has been willed to a politician, a politician has willed into his family for, for life, forever. He has converted private... Sir, 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 uh, I, I started that solo, 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 solo. I said, I said that I'm appalled that people are getting disappointed, that disappointing in the political class. To understand, and what you have said that NDC members are there is a kind of political equalization. That has brought us this, this far. Wherever we are, leading to the closure of the Guta shops, our policy decisions that we have taken as a government and as a country. So, for example, you say you are doing one district, one factory. Nobody, as of now, know, knows how much money has been spent. Who are the beneficiaries of the, uh, that policy? And when we speak, it's, oh, we have supported existing companies. If we are supporting existing companies, then there are two things you are aiming as a government to solve your economic situation. You may use Ghana's money, invest in those companies, one for productivity, and for employment, and perhaps thirdly for returns on the investment. No, so yeah. we have built 210 factories, yet our unemployment rate is that high. When you ask them of the factories, they mention eco juice, eco juice. How is eco juice? Resolving our import substitution problem that we have. Liquid juice. It's Amma and her friends that would drink juice every morning. But me and Bernard Mona, what, what do we what do we need eco juice for? If you are exporting eco juice, you see, when you are when you are exporting, then you are raking in foreign exchange, isn't it? But then when you take my money tax money, to give tax exemptions, lower tariffs, to, you are crying, Lebanese and Chinese, check, who are the owners of the, so, the factories you even allege that you are supported, check their backgrounds. When you decide that you will take Ghana's money, $36 million, to invest in a hotel business, you understand? And then it comes out that the hotel belongs to your brother-in-law. And that's the only reason why you are investing. Because otherwise, the area they are building, as you're supposed to build this hotel, is even overcrowded with hotels. The airport area there. You're talking about President Akufuado's brother. I thought you were talking about Solomon Ousu's brother-in-law. Akufuado's brother-in-law. So, no. <laughs> Yesterday, I saw your regional minister. Demolishing houses at the Ramsha site. Yes. Where has the Minister of Environment been? Because that Ramsha site 
we signed a convention yeah. and that every year Ghana takes money from that. So where was the region, uh, your environment minister? He was doing Galamsey. Your environment minister was doing Galamsey himself. I have always drawn attention to the wager. When I do pass the wager, the dam is here and there's a big mountain on top of it. Yeah. And we are allowing people to, you know, excavate the, the hill. One day, if it drops, what will happen? What will happen? And it will certainly drop. So whatever we are going through, Sana, I am saying that is because of our policy choices and decisions. You are a country that is supposed to be doing planting for food and jobs. And you take your annual output at, and then you see that we have imported tomatoes from Burkina Faso of all places. And you are happy as a minister of agri. All you do is to come and tell us that a, a, a finger of plantain is four cities because his wife goes to the market. And this man, instead of finding solution, you see, if we are if we are a sensible government and a country, by now, the Minister of Agri should have designed a program that look, the Ukraine war is not going to end, isn't it? And these are the uh, art force food inflation. There, we can we can stop it. You, you can't. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Solo, solo, solo. Yeah, let, let him. Let him. Solo. Uh, Ambassador, please speak. You, you the last time I to checked, me me. Uh, the last time I checked, the, a great minister said he has met some transport companies and they were going to hold the food to a crap. Fertilizers are those which were not for sale and you sold to the farmers. And then you allow people that you allow donkeys to say uh, to steal the fertilizers. You see. What is it? So if it's fertilizer, what are you doing about it? So now, if you have a serious government and you know that fertilizer is your challenge, what do you do about it? Yes, Apart from Ukraine, don't we have any other country that makes a fertilizer? The compost plant at uh, uh, Kolebude, what are we doing with it? You have, you have started too late, if you even you have started. Sana, so now, my legacy Today, in today's country, it's not to have told young uh, NDC communicators to be insulting anybody. My legacy has contributed to the political administration and then public administration of this country, and it's and clear. You, Mate, Mate. If people like even if, if people like Bernard mm -hmm. and the uh, senator calls me uncle, they mm -hmm. don't do that for fun. Yes. It's because of the contribution sure. I've made to this country. Sure. Mm. No, but that was not a reference. Let me mm. clear. Listen, if you don't care, if you care to know, uh -huh. I established the pension industry uh, regulatory authority. No, but is so it, I have contributed. Uh, but, uh, let me clear that uh, so that we don't leave this place. Yeah, I, think, I think he was Where, using you. Uh, yes, it was not that I was referring to you. I forgive you. Referring. Yes, uh, no, I cannot come no. here again. I must say that you have to laugh for me. Today, <laughs> when <laughs> traders are on strike, mm -hmm. a strike, it takes chiefs and queen mothers to speak to them. What does, this, what does this mean to you? What does the investor outside the country view in Ghana? The traders are, are on strike. It's the chiefs and queen mothers who are intervening. Where's our trade minister? They only came to act. They, 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 had been, they were met by the minister and dealt with the issues. Ambassador, thank you. So, I am saying that we are here because of the policy choices of this government. And instead of accepting it, that at this stage, we all need to come together as a government, as a country, not as opponents. You are always throwing invectives against the opposition. Okay. Ambassador, thank you.
Thank you. Uh, this is Hadi in Pick Farm who says, waking up each morning and realizing that Nanado is still our president is like watching a horror, horror movie. President Nanado <laughs> was more interested in becoming a president than accepting the responsibility of the presidency. When this happens, the economy will expose your true identity as president. Uh, Amma. <laughs> so, I mean... <laughs> who? It's, 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 for me, it's interesting that, you know, um, some phrases come up now more than ever. Phrases like artificial inflation, imported inflation. As we were talking, I was jotting them all down. <laughs> now, 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 if you ask us to give, give um, 20 adjectives to inflation, I'm sure we can all come up with 20 yeah. adjectives. I would beg the MPP to stop yeah. all the grammar. You know, because because it looks as if now what we are doing with inflation is playing grammar. Yeah. Instead of solving the problem, we are we are looking for all that words to use to describe the inflation that deflates responsibility from us. So anything to add to inflation, so it looks like it's not the government that is causing it. So imported inflation, it means that the inflation came from somewhere. Of course. Then we say what artificial inflation, and it means that what happened. The, the, uh, come on, come on. Inflation is inflation. Okay. Actually. Uh, Amma, it's artificial because the inflation that we have right. by government statistics and the inflation that we feel when we go to the market completely different. Completely I different. agree with Bernard. Why would you I, agree? I agree when with when Bernard. How can you leave me to Abbas? Let me talk. <laughs> Please, let me You've forgotten that Amma, Amma is a lady. <laughs> like the Amma. minister for our Greg's wife, Amma goes to the market. I mean, how and and, and you see, I've even been corrected. People have sent me messages telling me that I the 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 room of A4 that I said was 45, 45 cities. It's actually fifty and sixty in some places. Uh, People have sent me messages to tell me that I said forty five. It's actually fifty. It's actually sixty. You buy Coca Cola at uh, Vanity Night Club. It's not the same as buying Coca Cola. So, so you've been coming there. Well, it's, it's okay. Let me go on. <laughs> let, let, let me go on. So, I mean, and, and just briefly yeah, also about this issue about um, um, artificial inflation. And, and it's a big argument we tend to make. We, we, we sort of um, put the blame at the trader, you know, um, the second hand trader. And I wonder why we do that. I go to the market as a trader. I go and buy this, um, let me use malt. Malt is family. I go and buy this bottle of malt for five CDs. It's in my shop. I'm selling it, or I'm, I bought it at five, so I'm going to sell it at six cities. Mm -hmm. Now, it's been in my shop for about a month. And in that month of me having this bottle of malt that I bought for five cities, the dollar has done its thing. It must have been around 11 when I bought it. It's now 16. We all forget that from selling this, is that meant that I'll go back to the market to buy another malt to come and sell? And yet, so why do you blame me if I increase the price of the malt? Why are you blaming me? How can I work magic to supplement the six leaves to go and buy another one? And you can't tell me it's artificial inflation. I mean, what are you telling me? I, I need to make business. You see, so, so for me, hmm. the excuses that government keeps making, neither here nor there. Let's stop it. Let's deal with the issues. You know, consistently insisting on blaming the Ghanaian for the wars you've inflicted is annoying. Let's stop it. Hmm. Stop blaming traders. Stop blaming traders as being greedy. They are greedy. They are, no, it's not greed. He has to go back and buy. That's How is he going to go back and buy? Now, yeah, everybody is let, let's look at the issues we have today. It's not just Guta that's on strike. And I'm surprised that Solomon is saying he, he, when he goes there. We all saw the video. Didn't we see the video of the, the people giving the money? I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. Okay, I don't even, I'm not even, that's NPP matters. I'm not even interested in that one. Let me go on. Let me go on. You saw there was a video of money being packed in somebody's I'm even, I'm shocked. I'm shocked that someone, but I mean, neither here nor there. Let me continue. Let me, for the heartache, I've had it since this administration. Now, Solomon. Please, let Amma talk because I don't have time. Today, not only is Guta going on strike, and and I would agree with what, um, um, Ambassador, I was going to say that, let me say Ambassador said, about it being worrying that presently in Ghana today, those negotiating with the labor funds are the traditional leaders. And I can give a thousand examples. When the labor union, trade um, union this year, decided to go on strike, so now if you hear the details of the negotiation, you'll be shocked how government managed that negotiation process. It's amazing. 
you wonder if it's a bunch of kindergarten kids. Unions, Ghanaian unions are angry. They are threatening to strike. And finance minister, um, uh, labor, like four high delegated, you know, ministers sat with them. And the tactics that they used in that negotiation, it's as if they went there to annoy the, the, the unions. It's amazing. So if today the Labour Front refuses to dialogue with government, it's perfectly understandable. Now we have to call in chiefs and queen mothers come and dialogue on our behalf. Basic negotiation. We can't do negotiation. This government is that clueless. It can't even negotiate with, with important stakeholders. The government cannot negotiate with important stakeholders. It's ridiculous. This morning, as I was driving, I was listening to um, one of the executives of... Um, um, the university teachers associations you know four of them have gone on strike yeah. or are threatening to go on strike as we speak today so they are on strike yeah. and one of their major issues is the fact that government by itself unilaterally without any consultation with any of the organizations decided to withdraw um, um some of the allowances in today's ghana today when the dollar is moving around 16 to one today is the time that government decided by itself to withdraw allowances from the university mm. Ah, what is happening? I mean, seriously, has the country completely gone mad? And you think that the university teachers will sit down quietly and allow this to happen? Even the salary that they are taking, it's not, so, it's not doing anything for anybody. Whose salary in Ghana today is supporting them? For the people paying their rent in dollars and paying school fees in dollars, I, I can't even think about what's happening with them. This is what they are paying in City Square, we are complaining. So, I mean, this is the time that government is showing its insensitive best towards labor. Now, when the trade unions were asking for 20% COLA, inflation was hovering around 27, 28, 29. So the inflation is around, what, 30? 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 37.2. It's producer yeah. price inflation that is over 40. It was 40 it's 37.2. It was 123 in the year Nigeria did tell you. For now, it's 37. What is happening? Uh, it's 37.2. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Why are you yeah. people churning out of every year's year? Producer price inflation is 35. No, no, seriously. It is 37.2. Is that not the case? Yes, that is con oh, CPI. Yeah, I mean, there is a producer it. price that's over 45. Why is it going producer price? 37. 37. Elsewhere, elsewhere, and for less crimes, for less economic crimes, people heads are rolling. Finance minister sacked, uh, PM, she's had to resign. I mean, a certain, you know, show of integrity. You understand what I'm saying? Clearly, this government has none. Now, there's, there's something that Solomon said that I, I really need to address before we leave here. Okay. Nothing about, um, um, you know, and I started that conversation about Ghanaians losing trust in the politician apathy and it's something i speak about a lot but i would <coughs> dare say here that presently if we hear any Ghanaian say that the next election i won't vote the person is mpp but how did you arrive at that oh that's my how can that be? from I... my personal perspective so when you can't argue so with that from my personal perspective from my personal perspective and from people that i speak with Friends that I know that are openly MPP, what they are saying today is that they won't vote. They are not saying that they will vote against MPP. They are saying they won't vote. Listen, let's remind ourselves as Ghanaians that when you go out and you vote, you are not voting for a party. You are voting for yourself. You. You are voting for yourself. Yes. The option we have presently is NDC MPP. True. Are they the best? That make their name. No, I dare say. But between the two, let's be truthful. Between the two, come on. We have seen MPP. Yes. We are feeling MPP today. Yes. Let's vote them out. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Between MPP and MPP. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ama. Uh, that, that takes us exactly 10 minutes past 12. Uh, this is lawyer David Ametepe who says uh, good morning uh, to everybody in the studios. Um, please ask Solo what backlogs his government has been dealing with. Again, ask Solo what buffer funds has his government created within the last six years. When in opposition, they were running their mouth promising free this, free that. It was because the visionary JM and his invisible economic management team had created buffer funds such as the petroleum funds under the Petroleum Revenue Management Act. 
At least so when his people came to meet fans, such as the Canadian Grant for the Agriculture Sector Improvement. The MPP quickly developed slogans called policies. That is free SHS, planting for food and jobs, etc. And quickly MPP's fans. On one solid team. Oh, what a fantastic team. That's coming from lawyer David Ametepe. Um, <laughs> well, the, thank you very much for making time to uh, watch us today. We're very grateful to you. Live on Pan African Television on TV. We're also live on Pan African Television on Facebook, Pan African TV on YouTube. We're live on radio on Radio Gold, several affiliates across the country. A big thank you to Ahunto 92.3 FM. I was joined in the studio this morning by Ambassador Sampiale. And there are two great things for, Ambas for Ambassador Sampiale. One from Wude Duje in the UK. The other one coming from Kasdain, uh, Tamale. And then uh, a, a, a big thank you to Ama Pratt for making time to join us today. Comrade Bernard Mona is uh, former chairman of the People's National Convention, also the convener for Justice for Ghana. Join us. And of course, Solomon also sitting very close to me. He's a member of the communications team of the new patriotic party. Uh, a big thank you all for making time. Let me say good morning to Alex Aita and also to Nee Brown. And that's how we conclude the show for today. Once again, uh, there's a message that came in from Positive Change in Medina. It is it's almost 11 a.m. That was an hour ago. We are all still a social welfare. No single vote has been cast. What is happening? No voting material is available. Please, for those of you within the National Democratic Congress, you have the whole day to do this. Uh, and this is how you start conflicts. Can you give yourself time? Wish you all the best, but have some patience and give yourself time. Uh, we'll be monitoring what happens there and wish you all the, the party, your party all the best. Yeah. At this time, for party organization, this ballot material and everything is with them. Who they met you? Someone must instruct them. And you are not here. You, Who should sure have paid them? The but constituency conferences are usually not only about no voting, right? <laughs> Ambassador, <laughs> the constituency conferences are usually <laughs> not about only voting, right? Can we vote voting. Voting, there's nothing, nothing more voting. Oh, okay. more. There may be a policy conf uh, conference okay. to discuss the constitution and others, but this is for voting strictly. Someone is going to read. My name is Senna Numbo. A big thank you from the crew here at Pan African Television, Radio Gold, and all the other stations across the country. We are back same time next week with another edition of the show. Condolences to my colleague at Radio Gold, Ochami Bajimba, who is burying his mom today. He has labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer.